everybody. Welcome to episode 28, I think, of Probably. the Intermission Podcast, the show where two film students discuss classic, iconic, and obscure films from times gone by. We are your hosts, Oscar W. Fitch. Oh, uh, hot diggity dog, everyone. It's podcast time. I'm Bobber's Tweed. Bobber's Tweed. <laughs> As I'm known in the streets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm so excited to be back. Yeah. Christ. Yeah, this, I, is the, this is the first one we're recording after Christmas. The first one recording of 2022. Yes, the first it is episode 28, by the way. I just nice one, nice no one. Worries. Uh, we'll see how long this goes, so it might be another two-part like last year's list mm. was, but we'll see. Mm. Uh, and, and yeah, so this isn't one where we're going to be talking about a classic, iconic, or obscure film no. from times gone by. In fact, we're talking about, is there any classic or iconic films? I'd say there's, I, there's iconic films. In my list. I don't know for me. I don't know for There's me. There's definitely an icon um, in my list. But the, 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 in mine, I'm definitely probably covering the obscure. Yes. <laughs> I'm, good. I'm, I'm pro- definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. So yeah, our l- top 10 favorite films of the year 2021. And a few yeah, little, boy. few little like clarifications before mm. we get going with it. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, just a little bit. Mm. Um, obviously, as I said, Favorite films are 2021. First of all, our favorite, which means yes, what we personally prefer. We're not saying this is the definitive yeah. lists of just, the best films. Just like my of, opinion, yeah. man. Yeah, and also UK releases. Um, mm. If you noted last year when we talked about our favorite films of last year, we there was obviously films that we included in that list that technically in the gra- in the American terms, mm. in terms of the more international based things, it would have been oh, but, but those were twenty nineteen. Yes. Like I talked I, we talked we both talked about Parasite. Yeah. Because that came out February twenty twenty for us. Yes. Similar thing this year. Because last year we like films such as Nomad Land, Sound of Metal, uh Another Round, um there were some other ones, but there, there were certain films mm. that didn't qualify for last year's list because we did the father that was that was another one mm. that didn't qualify for 2020 for us because we would have got them within 2021 yes so similar thing this year mm-hmm. whereas like uh so for example films that will not be within this list uh films such as licorice pizza belfast nightmare alley the souvenir part two and the worst person in the world they don't come out until like they d- haven't got like a. J- oh, they've sorry. got. <laughs> I thought he was gonna list a Ridley Scott film. No, no. Uh. <laughs> they had like a. They had like a twenty twenty. They had like a January, February, March twenty twenty two release. So expect maybe some of those films to be in next year's list if they were to appear. Yes. Um, and also, what this list will end up doing. We didn't end up doing this properly last year. Yeah. But I thought what would be a cool thing mm. is if by the end of it we almost make like. What our uh, what the collected intermission film of the year is Ooh. within our list? Because technically, okay. last year I did the did the mm. calculations. Last year we would have named Soul the film of the year. Really? Yeah, it was between that or Parasite, oh. purely yeah. because. And if the only thing was, if I had Parasite one spot higher, yeah. then Soul and Parasite would have been tied. Okay. Final film of the year, but mm. the fact that but Soul was technically intermission's film of twenty twenty. Wow. It wasn't the film that we both said was the best film of the year. No. But it was the film that we combined had yeah. technically higher. Oh, fair in that enough. Sense. Yeah, uh, so I thought it would be yeah. by the end of this list, we'll determine who what would be the intermission yeah. film of the year. Sweet. A lot more difficult, I think, than last year. Yeah, probably, because I don't know how much overlap we're going to have. I don't, yeah, I'm unsure. I'm, I'm worried I'm unsure. about <laughs> us not having any films the same at all, to be <laughs> That's honest. That's a strong possibility. It, it is. I, we might have to refer to honorable mentions on my end. If that's I the think case, we're definitely in terms gonna, of like, we're what definitely we... going to have one okay. in common. I'm pretty sure. What I find interesting as well, because also this is our favorite films as of now. Mm. This could change. Yeah, this could very much change. Like I, like when you said so, then I was surprised. So I was like, mm. you, uh, are, and I, I like it, but it's not. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> it's like, fine. Looking at my list, yeah, from last year, mm. like this was my ten. Yeah, ten was 1917. That was my 10. Oh, my goodness. Okay. My I'm nine. Got mine. I've got yours. Oh, have you? Okay, well. cool. So, Good. My nine mm. was A Sun, which was a Taiwanese film. Okay. Which I remember really liking, but I haven't like felt the need to revisit it, yeah. which is interesting. Uh, eight was Happier Season. Okay. That's the film I have revisited. Is that the Christmas Stewart yeah. one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. My number seven was Uncut Gems. Okay. Uh, pretty like that film. I'm not... Mm. I'll probably still... Looking at the rest of the films on this list, that yeah. still feels safe for me. Okay. My number six was Soul. Okay. 
Yeah, my number five was Portrait of a Lady on Fire, which I would have personally have a bit higher now. Yeah. In all honesty. My number four was Lover's Rock. Which is that? That one? Steam remember when Steam McQueen did Small Axe? Oh, I see. Lovers yeah, Rock it's the one. The, is that the house party one? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. Which I still, re- I haven't I, revisited. Yeah, since it's cool then, though. though. I like that. I really, I really like it. My number three was Parasite. Mm-hmm. Which, yeah. My number yeah. two was The Lighthouse. Yeah. And my number one was I'm Thinking of Ending Things. Yeah. I'm unsure if I would have Lighthouse or I'm Thinking of Ending Things in the same spot. I don't know. Yeah. I haven't revisited that I'm Thinking of Ending Things in a little while. Mm. I think but, Lighthouse wasn't on my list. I don't it think I'd seen it. You yet. had it. I, you liked I had it. Seen yeah, you oh, had okay. like you did like it, yeah. but you just hadn't seen it. That's now right. your list, Robbie. Mm-hmm. Your number ten was The Invisible Man. Cool. It's a cool movie. Your number <laughs> nine. Your number nine was Defy Bloods. Cool movie. Yeah. Your number eight was Bad Education. Bad Education. The Hugh Jackman. Oh, the uh, Hugh Jackman one. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't stick with that. <laughs> that would be number 10. I think that was more fresh in your mind at the time. Yeah, probably, probably, yeah. That that would be number 10 for me. Mm. Your yeah. number seven was 1917. Yeah. Uh, number six was Parasite for you. Yeah, that sounds about right. Your number five was The Gentleman. Yeah, it's <laughs> pretty cool. I like that movie. <laughs> your number four was The Trial of Chicago 7. Yeah, I uh, loved your, that movie. Your number three was The Personal History of David Copperfield. Yes. Uh, your number two was Soul. No. <laughs> really? No, it's not that high anymore. Interesting. Not for me. What I, was my number one? Uh, Jojo Rabbit. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's still at the top. Yeah. I think um, Bad Education would have been at the bottom. Out of all that lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would put David Copperfield and Gentleman Above Soul. Okay. In terms of now, because I'm like, which films have I revisited the most? I've only seen Soul probably the once. Maybe I saw it twice. I think you said you saw it twice. But the gentleman I've seen you see, yeah. so many times now. I mean, that was a big basis for the whole fucking, like... Oh, it's so good. For, for our end of second year. Yeah, it was, yeah. Pro- produ- project. Yes. That was the whole Possibly. point, yeah. I kept just telling my writers to watch, watch that you. movie. <laughs> Which is what I find interesting. Cause I, find, I think film... I think it's also... That's a good reason why I kind of wanted to cover more, like, older films. I like, do more of a retrospective yeah. podcast because we can then look at, like, the actual, like, legacy and, like, yeah. feel more, like, its impact in time. Exactly. Whereas I think within talk about more modern films, mm. I don't mind. I, again, I love doing, I love looking at modern films and doing that. But I always like, I think I realize like I don't necessarily quite enjoy documenting my immediate opinions on them because yeah. I'm not as critical on them. Yeah, because then in a couple of years time, more you'll be like, because yeah. yeah. again, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which but again, I like, I love doing these lists. Mm. But again, because I think there's some films where, like, well, for example, like when I did um. Favorite films of 2017. Yeah. Uh, UK releases still. I like The Disaster Artist as my number one. Okay. And I still like that film, but I wouldn't say Mm. that's my number one. But even at the time, I didn't even watch, like, I didn't even see Comedy by Your Name that year. Uh, Oh, So, But, like, now naturally that is my... But also, like, I hadn't seen A Ghost Story that year either, which Mm. I love that film as well. And also, I hadn't seen a film called Columbus, which which is, again, I fucking love that film. Oh, okay, cool. So, it's interesting. So, there'll be films, like, there'll be films that... I will end up seeing mm. that I didn't get. Like, for example, there's the films that I haven't got a chance to see. Yes. I didn't see Annette. I wanted to see that. That mm-hmm. was uh, the Adam Driver, Mar- Marion Cotillard yes. musical yes. Um, from the same director as Holy Motors, this weird fucking French director. That's so not cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the, the main reason why I didn't end up catching some films was the length of time that they were. Yeah. Like, Annette was two and a half hours, and it was like, mm. I'm, I don't, yeah. don't need to put. Another one, I didn't, ca- I didn't end up watching The Harder They Fall. I didn't end up seeing that. And there was another one. I can't remember. Ooh. But like those like the mm. two ones I kind of was like, I want to watch that. And I just didn't end up watching yeah, it. Yeah. Uh more so I was like, I uh, just not that I didn't fancy them. I didn't fancy them at the time. Mm. Um oh, the hand of God. I didn't end up seeing the hand of God. It's Italy's submission for oh, okay. best foreign film. It's yeah. on Netflix. Okay. And it's a bit it's quite autobiographical for the director. Oh, okay, so, so yeah. okay. I wanted to give it a go, just didn't end up seeing not it. Not about um, Diego uh, Maradona. Hmm? Not about Diego Maradona. <laughs> no, it's Famous not. for the hand of God. No, the it moment. isn't. No, I, rem- I know about that. Um, but yeah. Awful. <laughs> <laughs> Real bad bloke, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, we won't, we'll do a bit more of a bullshit intermission thing in yeah. between when we go to yes. our sixes. Yeah, okay. And then five, cool. because there's a few bullshittery that I want to yeah. do. But yeah. Sorry. But how about... We get on to the Let's list. Let's do it. I'm um, I'm so ready. I'll go through mine. Okay. We'll, we'll go 10, 
10. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we'll do yeah, that, yeah, yeah. like what we did last year. Mm. And I'll throw in some honorable mentions towards the end. Yeah, I'll do that too. Uh, my number 10. Yes. 10th favorite film of the year. Mm. Um, last year, talked about Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Yeah. Celine Sciamma is back with another film this year. It's a film called Petite Mama. Mm. Um, and when I, and uh, Petite is a very good way of describing because it's a very tiny film. Oh, about, yeah. an, about an hour, 12 minutes. Oh, Jesus. So, Really tiny. They're barely a feature. <laughs> barely, barely a feature. But it's um, it's almost like this, like, almost like... So, and I also do want to say, I don't want to... Uh, there's a possibility of spoilers. Mm. For certain films, I want to kind of keep them a bit spoiler-free. Okay. But if you... I'm going to say, if you don't want to know anything about any films... Yeah. There's time codes in the description. Mm. You can look at the chapters in yeah. the timeline and just... I'll probably be going quite spoilery. Yeah, if you want to look point, at the chapters so and be like, oh, I don't want to know anything about Petite Maman, just skip yeah. to Robbie's number 10 then. Yeah, um, sorry about but, that, lads. But, uh, <laughs> but Petite Maman, it's kind of like we follow like this little girl yes. who moves to um, more of like a, a house within the woods with her, uh, her parents, her mum oh, yeah. and her dad, mm. uh, following the uh, the death of a grandma oh, yeah. type of thing. So it's yeah. more... They're clearing the house. They're clearing the yeah. house out for mm. uh, the grandma. And... Um, the the little girl she ends up finding another little girl mm. as well who looks oddly similar to her, and they end okay. up growing a bit close together, and then you end up learning. This is where the spoilery bit comes into, and uh, I knew nothing about this. Yes, but this is, I feel like this is a cool selling point for you. Mm. You end up finding out it's like oh, that's her mother when she was a little girl. Oh, so it's that's a little cool. bit it's a little bit of a timey wimey thing, but there's no like she walks through a wardrobe or she walks through a port. It's like. That's like, fucking cool, Like, there's little moments, man. like, she goes, she sees her, because you find out, like, her mum used to have, like, her mum mentions the fact how she had, like, this little den mm. in the woods at one point. Yeah, yeah, And, like, the first time we see the little girl, the other little girl, is that uh, she ends up going out to the woods and she ends up helping mm. the little girl build the den. Cool. So yeah. there's, like, that thing like That's that. Sick. And then it starts pissing down rain and then they start running back to the other girl's house and then mm. the main character ends up stopping and goes, wait, that looks familiar. Mm. Is that grandma's? What? So That's it's like, it. It's, it's like little moments like that, but yeah. it's like such a quiet film again. I mean, I described this with Celine Sciamma's Portrait of a Lady on Fire. It's such a quiet film. Yeah. Um, it's not as like really big, extravagantly shot like Portrait of a Lady on yeah. Fire. Again, I said Portrait of a Lady on Fire is this really bright, vivid, yes. period piece, mm. period romance film. This is, again, tiny. It's not yeah. like big, extravagant whatever mm. still looks really good but it's not like there's it it's foresty color palette mm. it's not like this yeah. very like wow yeah like amazing but it's 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 very so slice of life that it yeah. is almost like yeah. like it's like because one thing like i really appreciate about these types of films like mm. i really started preaching this with the films of Yasuji Ozu, who I became a big fan of within the last, like, year. Yeah. It's like, you're just kind of, like, watching just shit happen. Mm. And then it only gets to, like, either either the very end of the film or, like, a bit good way into it that you start, like, almost getting emotional. I don't know. Because okay. there, there's a moment... I can't, I can't remember the specific person who said the line, but I do remember there is a line in Petite Mama. Again, you know I love my, like... Mm. lines like a few little lines type yeah. of shit it's not really wordy film but there's a specific line where um it's the mother yes. i can't remember which version of the mother who says this oh, yeah. but says to the little girl that uh, you didn't create my sadness it was the little girl version of that i think it's because it's like That's which is like cool. it's god it's mm. again it's, it's sweet it's a very sweet film yeah it's a u-rated film as well so technically it could just be it could, fun for all the family technically it's a children's film yeah I can imagine people being bored by it. Oh yeah. But in my head, I'm like, yeah, it's not there's not enough time to be fully bored by yeah. it. Yeah. Like if if this was the same type of pace for like a two hour film, maybe mm. I'd be like, oh, maybe people would be bored by this. Yeah. But in yeah. my head, I feel like if you're like watching it, mm. you may as well just watch it, even if you're not really enjoying it. Yeah. And again, as I say, with these specific types of films, it's almost like the, the impact of the film doesn't occur until the end. Right, okay. Of yeah. It. Yeah, That's yeah. the reason why I like Boyhood quite a bit, actually. Yeah. And I'm a fan of Richard Linklater in the sense that you mm. almost just like experience something. Yes. And then it, the importance or the, the specialness of it only occurs to you when you're looking back at it in hindsight. Mm. How I always describe it, it's like, well, that's like life. You don't realize yeah, yeah, yeah. it's important until you're remembering it. Yes, exactly. And I feel like a film like this, you don't realize like kind of how like sweet and special and like yeah. sentimental it is until you are like until like the credits hit and then you go, yeah. oh yeah, that 
absolutely delightful that. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. So I would recommend Petite Mama. Um, I think this is the. No, this isn't the French selection. No. Uh, it's mental that this isn't. Okay. The French selection for best international film. Yeah. And the film that they did choose, I will talk about again. As right. Well. Okay. But it's mental. That yes. They didn't choose this because this is a much safer choice for an international right, feature. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's weird. They didn't do that la- last time. Like, uh, fr- France didn't submit Portrait of a Lady on Fire for their selection, mm. which is weird. It, did, it, it was getting. If, I mean, I haven't seen it, but I know it was getting. I know all about the fucking, it. Like, like everyone was talking about yeah, it. When it was, it was like coming that out. and like Parasite were like yeah. the two films. Like, holy shit, these yeah. two films. But no, they chose like a lame is, but like not. It was like set in modern day. Okay. Which I heard was good, but I mean, I mean no one's yeah. talking about. You know, no, because no, like, we've seen Lim, is it? Did no it? Talking, but when we, yeah, so I don't, know, I don't know already. if France have anything against Celine Sciamma. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. know. She's, she's heavily LGBT storyteller, so I don't, don't mm. know if, like, but like, France are cool with that. Yeah, I, thought, I, I don't know yeah. if they're like, I don't know. Odd. But again, it's really, their French selection, yeah. their selection is kind of weird. For okay. This, yeah. Okay. I'm kind of behind it, but also I'm like, I mean, you're mad for Mitch putting that <laughs> being you like fucking lunatics. Mm. What? Well, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think of what it is, but I don't know. Like my mum said with Petite Mama because I saw it with her. Oh yeah, because yeah. I wanted because this was only playing in Tyne side, and yeah, I wanted to get out and see it. So, but you know, I also don't. If I can not go on my own, then I mm. won't go. I, I, did I see a film on my own? I did go. I can't remember which film it was now. I saw various films on my own this year. I've had a great time. I did. One of them's in my own mentions. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah. I won't say it. Yeah. But I do. I did go to Tyneside on my own to see. I double build a film. Oh, okay. Cool. I, I yeah, think I told fine. you about that. Yeah. I can't remember. But yeah. But my, after Petite Mama, my mum was like, uh, my mum was a big fan of it. And she said, yeah. she said it was like, it felt like a, there was like a similar, there was a book that she read mm. as a kid. That's very similar. To that. oh, and okay, I feel cool. like that's a really good way to describe Petite Mama. And it is like mm. almost like a storybook. Oh, yeah. That yeah. you would read as a kid. Yeah. It's really delightful. Oh, good. And again, short enough to just fucking yeah, watch just it. stick it on. I think it's going on movie in the UK very soon. So okay, maybe by How the time it's what, what is movie? I don't know what that is. It's a streaming service that's basically like independent oh, okay. film stuff. Yeah, we can get a discount because we're students. Ooh, so instead of paying a ten, I'm paying seven quid. Oh, okay, yeah. So yeah. Oh yeah. Speaking of student things, here Spotify stopped charging me full price. It's annoying. I'm yeah. still a student. Yeah. Why am I getting yeah, charged a tenner? I flagged up saying like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you're now paying for premium. Well, hang, well, on. hang on. No, I'm not. I'm not paying a tenner a month. Thank you. I think Adam said it did him yeah. as well. I'm like, I might yeah. need to like look into that. Did it? Yeah, explode? I, I think you need to renew it. I Maybe remember. you need to I renew it. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, mm-hmm. Petite Maman is my number ten. Yes. Um, is it time for my number ten? Your number ten, Robbie. My number ten. Oscar W. Fitchett is a film that is a, is not a not a narrative film. Oh, a documentary. A documentary from Robert Tweedale this this year. Uh, you know, I've become very intellectual this year, mm. uh, so I've started appreciating documentaries. That's not true. I just blatantly <laughs> lied on this podcast. Uh, my number ten film for this year is Val. Oh um, yeah, Val's good. Val's Val good. was really cool. I like so it's. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, uh, it's Val Kilmer, famous actor and movie star Val Kilmer, who um, got throat cancer, mm. recovered, but now has like a tube in his throat so that he, he can only talk when he covers it. And when he does talk, it kind of hurts and he doesn't, you know, and people can't really understand what he's saying. But he's always, uh, throughout his life, it turns out he's been kind of a guy who's always had a video camera and has always been recording everything, apparently. So you just get to kind of see his career and he says that he wants to make it, he wanted to make a film about acting and truth or whatever. And it it really kind of is that. Yeah, no, I agree. Like you get a full kind of perspective of what, of what he thinks of acting as a profession. Yeah, it's interesting. He's a very, he's not an odd guy, but he's like, I don't know what it is. His perspective on on acting and art generally, yeah, is very like, huh? Mm. Okay. Yeah, it's weird. He's not like he's not really like um. He's not casual about it, but he's also not a wanker about yeah. it. Like, it, like he, it's almost like he's really trying to be, like he really wants to try. Like again, what really was like quite an interesting look is when he was trying to do that play. Yes. Which yeah. unfortunately did not yeah, yeah. 
it was going to be a play that he was going to hopefully turn into a film. That's yeah. what he was wanting to do. Which he did do a few shows of, yeah. didn't he? Who was he again? Who was he? He was... Oh, God. Jeff was... No. He was playing a poet. I can't yeah. remember who it was. Either, but, like, it was fascinating. Yeah. And it was a really interesting, like, look... Mm. Like, what what he was doing with that. It was really interesting and all that. And then, unfortunately, that's what he had to get. Yeah. Because we got... he was... he He's kind of a very spiritual guy. And he says that he likes to give a bit of himself to a character and when he's played that character, take a little bit of them into him mm. so that he becomes this kind of evolved version of himself every yeah. single time he's played a character and that's how he sees it. Um, but there's also interesting things about, like, I was interested seeing it thinking, like, is he going to talk about Batman at all? He does. Fa- I love that. That bit. is, yeah. It's the bit where he is like, um, oh, yeah, as a kid, you want to be Batman, but when you realise like, you don't want to act as him because yeah. you're, like, you're just kind of, like, exactly. stood about. It's, He's like, like every every little boy wants to be Batman, but no one wants to play him in a movie. Or something like that is, I think, what he says. Well, it's interesting because it's like, yeah, you end up wearing this really uncomfortable suit and yeah. you're doing, like, and then you and then it doesn't occur to you because, like, well, then the filming process, like, you wear that, you yeah. do a bit of a line, and then you stop for a while. Exactly. Like, you're not being he's Batman. Like, you're like, not you're being Batman because you're basically just kind of a prop. Yeah, like, you yeah. just get plonked in and get told to say your lines, and then you get taken out of the suit for a bit so you can breathe or whatever. Like, it, it's, it sounded like an awful experience. Well, that's why they're Batman and Robin. He was like, no. no that's that's why not, he chose not to do yeah, that. Yeah, he's like, I'm not doing that. Then he, he did, like, oh, I forgot. It was, it was some film that I've never heard of that he decided to do Yeah, he did, because he said that there was a... It wasn't it like a thing where he was playing... It was like an adaptation of like a old British TV show or something yeah. where he was a guy who had like 30, 13 different personalities or something. Mm. And so he was like, so I got to play like 13 different characters. And for an actor, it's like, why would you not want to do that? Yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah. like he was like, Might no not one being a great film from what yeah, I Yeah, he was like, it wasn't a great movie, but like, why would you not want to do that? And I think that's interesting as well. That's in- Yeah, it is interesting to me in the sense of like some actors don't, because if you think about it, there might be some actors who do films not in the sense of like, oh, this looks like a great film. It's like, yeah. oh, this looks like a really cool role for me to yeah, do. Exactly, yeah. And the film might be shit, but it's like... But at least I had But at least I could do something like, I really wanted to. Because again, it, he's like, I, I can give something of myself to that and then take something away from it. It's interesting, because I think as well, because if you reverse in our perspective, there's some situations where like, if we would have... Ma- like, I think about making a film mm. that would be a really cool film, like really yeah. cool visually. But then I think to myself, oh, but the actors were like, fuck all to do with yeah, it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Like, there's like, I mean, I'm like, um, with All Right, mm. I'm not saying, I, I think, because Joe asked me about that, he was like, oh, so how exactly was my performance in that? And at the yeah. time, I was like, well, I'm not really focusing on that. Mm. It's not really the f- type of thing. Yeah, with yeah. That. I was trying to do more so like a little tiny story within like this type yeah. of visual with it. Yeah, yeah. And so, but, and there would be another re- reverse foot. For, for actors in that sense, I was like, yeah. well, the film doesn't look that great, but that's not what I'm doing it for. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. it's like, it's, yeah, it's interesting. It was a very interesting kind of insight into the mind and career of this the, one guy. Uh, the Island of Dr. Monroe bit was. Oh my God, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. This is the bit where, like, there's a guy who's like, oh, yeah, is, is Marlon going to be on set? Oh, clearly not. Because yeah. like, there's just a Marlon Brando double. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, Marlon's it's here today. Horrific. Like, there's the bit when. um. The bit when he's recording because he's been set because the director's like being not very nice to him yeah. and Remus Lopin from Harry Potter, but I can't remember. David really Thewlis. Not. David Thewlis. Like, <laughs> like, like it, stuff like that is just, it's so interesting to see that kind of stuff happen on a huge, genuinely massive movie set. Like, it's the bit where it, like he goes out to Brando and then he's, uh, does he ask, he asks him like a proper like intellectual question on mm. acting and then he just kind of laughs. He goes, like, Give me a push. Yeah, he's like, Push this. Push, hammock. push my hammock or whatever <laughs> and, and he's it. like no a bigger push than that and stuff like that and he's like he said that it really hurt him didn't it because it was like Marlon Brando was one yeah. of his heroes in life and to see him just not be a nice person yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> made him real upset um, but yeah that's my number 10 is Val I really enjoyed it yeah bad bloke Brando <laughs> as he's known um, yeah my number 10 is Val really enjoyed it would highly recommend if you haven't if you haven't checked it out it's already. on now TV in the UK yeah, it's I on think. Prime for free as well oh, oh that's yeah, where I watched it it's gone from now TV oh uh, okay that's why yeah, yeah. yeah I, w- I watched it on Prime so if you've got Prime give it a look cool. who would have thought that Robbie Tweeder would have had an A24 film on us this before I did bang <laughs> there we go we're breaking new ground today well just you wait for the rest of the list not just that wait. not not not, A24. not that at all <laughs> Hang on a minute. Do you know what I'm going to do? Mm. I forgot to do this, but I may as well do it now. Go on. Hang on. What's, What's happening here? 
Um, hello, the people of watching this uh, podcast. I hope you're having a great time. Um, what is this? I want to. I want you to write down mm. three films that you think could be my number one. And we're gonna Easy. and we're gonna reveal that. Easy money. And I'm gonna do the same thing with you. I haven't got a pen. I, you can borrow mine out. Okay. Easy money. Right, mine. We'll rank them in terms of most likely okay. to be that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I hope I'm wrong. You hope you're wrong. On one of them, I hope I'm wrong because I'll be like, yeah, no, I, I really hope he's not saying this because it's not true. <laughs> well, like, I'm making up mine. It's just incorrect. Like, it's just not, <laughs> like, for you to say that would be your number one film would be incorrect, but that's fine. Well, you think I'll be saying it just for shits yeah. and gigs? No, I, I think you'd say it because you mean it, but you'd be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so. And I think I know what you're on about. Yeah. But, um... I might just go fucking nuts and put June in there. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine if Imagine you that'd be insane. <laughs> After everything that we talked about on the podcast. You know what? I can't think of a third. I'm leaving okay. two. I generally can't think of three films that could be your number one. I can think of... And I'm um, folding it up. And we'll leave it under... I'll leave it under this Oscar. Okay. Just for clarification there, viewers, I did not look at his thing there. I glanced over, but I didn't see anything. Really hope it's not that third one. I really hope it's not. I'll be very upset with you if it's that. <laughs> I'll just like you to be aware. And fold it and put it under that one. <laughs> right. Predictions right. made. My number nine. Yep. We want about A24. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Good. I'm about A24, right? My number nine. There's a film that's definitely not on Robbie's list. Okay. Uh, it's Mike Mills' Come On, Come On. Oh, um, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Fuck this movie. <laughs> you haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. But, but you I... shouldn't, because why would you? I'd, uh, I'd hate it. I, I, well, no, I'd probably just say I'd just like it out of spite. But I'll yeah, let, that's what I'll I mean. let you explain what it's actually about, because I don't mean you don't. <laughs> So, Come On, Come On. Is the new Mike Mills film. Mike Mills is a filmmaker that um, I feel like I'm on the cusp of loving. Okay. But I don't feel like he's necessarily made anything that I'm like. Like, he's almost on the cusp of being someone like Spike Jones for me. Oh, yeah. But he's not quite. Yeah. There. He did a film called Beginners, which I need to rewatch. That's a film with Hugh McGregor and Christopher Plummer. Oh, yeah. Where Christopher Plummer is Hugh McGregor's dad. Who's going through cancer? Uh, Christopher Plummer has got cancer. Oh, okay. So it's a bit of like cool. that. I haven't seen it in a long time, so mm. I don't need to rewatch it. Yeah. But he also did a film called Twentieth Century Twentieth Century Women, oh, which yeah. which I'm a big that. big fan yeah. of. Big fan. Very very Greta Gerwig. Very no Baumbach. Mm. Greta Gerwig's in the film. That's why I say oh, okay. as well. But yeah. it, it is very like. Yeah. I also I don't know why I say like it's it's very almost famous, but I think that's more so like because it's going it's kind of it takes place I think in the eighties or the seventies. Okay. And it's kind of got like that summer seventies, yeah, eighties yeah. yeah. vibe to it, that almost famous has yeah. as well. Love but come on movie. it's almost famous. Yeah it's yeah, great. It's so good. <laughs> uh, but come on come on is not oh and he also did a short film for the band The National. Oh. Um who I'm a, which I'm a big fan of. That short film has Alicia Vikander in it. Oh nice and cool. that's a short film that kind of chronicles a woman's life. Nice. But Alicia Vikander plays the mummy. Per- <laughs> no, she plays that girl in every stage of her life. Oh, cool. So okay. she plays a little girl, but it's Alicia Vikander. Yeah. And then she plays teenager, but mm. she's Alicia Vikander. Yeah. And then she's also an old woman, but she's that's Alicia Vikander. Cool. Do, do they like? Do they don't do makeup, makeup or is it just how she is? Costumes. Oh, just cool. costumes. Yeah, it's cool. 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 Uh, cool. But that's in black and white, Robbie, as well. So oh, do Christ. what you want. Okay. <laughs> do what you want. Fine. Fine. But come on, come on. I don't like this is weird. Like at first when I first watched the film, when mm. after the, the, the film finished, I thought to myself, that might be my number one. The reason why it isn't is because it's not one that's stayed in my head as mm. much yeah. as all the other films yes. that I'm gonna be talking about. Um but the fact that I thought that to begin with mm. gives me the reason to still keep it in my top ten. Yeah. Uh big Joaquin Phoenix fan. Yes. Uh he's he might be my favorite. He's one of my favorite actors mm. working today. 
Jess Cole was my favorite, but I yeah. think if you're about pure acting ability, I think yeah. Joaquin is the best. And I love like how this is the film he chose to do after Joker. Mm. You know, he won the Oscar for Joker. He could he can do anything. Yeah. He chose to do this film where he's just kind of more quiet and just himself. Okay. Like it's a ve- it's a very naturalistic performance. Yeah. It's not like you know, he's not play- being a character. If anything, it just looks like Joaquin Phoenix, yeah. really. It just is Joaquin Phoenix. Mm. And he plays a guy, he plays a radio journalist who has to uh, look after his nephew oh, yeah. uh, when his sister, Joaquin Phoenix's sister, has to uh, take care of her ex-husband, oh, yeah. his nephew's dad, yeah. who's going through drug, re- drug rehabilitation. Right. Okay. Thing. So yeah. Joaquin Phoenix is looking after... Uh, I forgot the kid's name. Woody Allen. It's not Woody Allen. Woody Norman. Okay. Woody Norman. Woody Norman. Uh, Jesse is his character's name. Right. And Joaquin Phoenix's character is Johnny. Johnny and Jesse. Um, but um, it, it's 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 the type of shit that I like in terms of dialogue where it's like again I'm a big I always like think about this because again I'm um I have a niece. So I always mm. like I always like to ask her just questions. I always have yeah. done ever since she could talk. I've always mm. been that fucking guy who's just been like, yeah, just being like, oh, how you doing? Yeah, or like what are you doing that for? Whatever. Or yeah, like, yeah. Or like you know, she picks up a green pen and she goes, that's purple. I went, no, that's green. Mm. And she went, no, it's purple. I went, no, no, but why do you think it's? <laughs> why, 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 you, why you lie? Why, why, you, why lying? you lying to me? <laughs> Second, <laughs> or like I just go, or like I always do that. Why? Yeah, 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 I like I like to I, I find I like to really explore a child's mind because I'm yeah. like you're in a really pure state right now. Like you got yeah. like you know you got no jaded opinions on anything. Yeah. Any opinion that you do have is either influenced by what's around you. So I'm yeah. just curious about that. And that's kind of basically this film as well because mm. uh, Joaquin Phoenix character he's a radio journalist that's traveling around anyway. Yeah, doing a piece interviewing children on oh, yeah. I think yeah. it's like their is persp- either their perspective on life or what they expect life to be or whatever, yeah. and that's Vox Pops. That's basically yeah. like, that's unscripted stuff as okay, well. So cool. Joaquin yeah. Phoenix is the, the film genuinely gets real kids. Right, and Joaquin okay. Phoenix just interviews them, and that plays oh, yeah. over sections yeah. every now and then. So it's very wordy, very like what is life from the perspective of a child, but also okay. it's not just Joaquin Phoenix being I'm the mature adult. Yeah, blah, blah. like he's going through. A, he's either going through a divorce or a breakup at this point anyway. Right, so it's okay. like he's a, he's a, he's he's, he's not, not doing great for himself anyway. He's, he's he hasn't got a stable life yeah, anyway. Yeah. So it's a bit of like yeah. it, it's it's just really fucking cool. I think I the soundtrack I'm a big fan of. It's kind mm. of very again the soundtrack in itself and just the whole film as a whole. I look at it as a bit a bit of a spiritual successor to her, oh, yeah. uh, not in the same level that mm. of her yeah. in my opinion. But it's it's. It's very modern feeling um, with every aspect. Like, I think, because yeah. even the black and white they use, they don't try to make the black and white look. It's not like, oh, let, let's make this look like an old film. Mm. It's very digital monochrome. Okay. Which to me, I just, it, it looks like, it almost looks like, you know, like an Apple advert. Yeah. Like where they do, it, yeah, it, it yeah. feels like that. It feels very sleek, very clean. Okay. And the soundtrack is kind of synthy, but it's mm. not, it's, you yeah, know, it's, yeah. it's more like, you know, just like I, I guess Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross E, yeah. but not yeah. as not as existential dread yes. dread filled. Yeah. Um and it's I think the only thing that like I it's weird because the film, again, it's not hugely memorable to memorable mm. to me, but I do remember really liking it. Right. And I do th- and I again I'm not surprised this isn't a big awards contender because again, it does kind of feel too small yes. for the Oscars. Yeah. It's not like you know, it's not heavy drama. Mm. There's drama in it, but it does feel more so like you're just hanging out. Yeah. In a sense. A little slice of life. Kind yeah, of yeah. It's, it's, yeah, but so far there's a theme. Yeah. <laughs> and number eight is not that. Okay, <laughs> good. It's not that at all. Yeah. Uh, but I think, like, I will, I, I do want to return to it. Yeah. Because I think, like, it is a film that I will gain more on other rewatches. Because, again, there's mm. just so much things being said. Yes, yeah. And I mean, literally, verbally being said, there's so many things being said there that I feel mm. like I kind of just want to watch again, actually, just more so. Yeah. It feels like I've just picked up, like, a like a journalistic magazine. Yes, fair in enough. In a sense. Yeah. So not a newspaper, but a magazine. Yeah. Or like, I'm reading a New Yorker article. Yeah. So not, like, a New York Times or anything, yeah. there, but, like, a bit of a trendy website article. Yeah. It's kind of how I feel about it. Cool, it's really okay. cool. I like it a lot. Joaquin Phoenix's class. Woody Norman is brilliant. Oh, yeah. They, wo- they get absolutely great child performance as well yeah. it's an overall really well acted film I think to be fair and yeah 
Good stuff. Pretty cool. I like Come On, Come On. It's exactly what I thought it would be. Yes. Do, do, you, do you think I would hate it? I don't think you would hate it. Okay. You would hate it because you'll say you want to hate it. That's a good point. But I don't think you would hate it because I don't think there's much to hate. Okay. Yeah. Like, it's literally like a yeah. film. It's like, I mean... It's one of them where I'm like... You see a film in black and white, you go, why? Yeah, well, that's, that's my, your first question. That's my first question why. is why. That's the thing I would like to clarify for the viewers. I don't dislike black and white movies. We watch a lot of them on this podcast, and I usually like them, right? <laughs> but my opinion is, right, old movies, yeah, they were in black and white because they had to be, right? They didn't have color. Something like Clerks, I can appreciate why it's in black and white because he couldn't afford color film. It was cheap for him to buy black and white film. That stuff is a cool little bit of trivia, so I'm like, yeah, it's really low budget and it's kind of inspirational sort of thing. I hate, and I mean genuinely, physically, <laughs> it repulses me when uh, a movie is in black and white for no reason. Like, there's no story based reason. It just is. And then if the director gets asked about it in an interview, they give some fucking wanky comment that doesn't mean anything. And then everyone goes, oh, yeah, actually, yeah, you're actually a genius. <laughs> just, not necessarily coming on that aspect of it. Yeah. But don't you think it's more so like, because I look at that and I think to myself, it's more of like, again, I'm more forgiving with that because I just like yeah. the look of black and white. Anyway. Yeah, I just, I just enough, think it's yeah. cool look anyway. Yeah. So I'm easy to please with. I'm like, yeah, yeah. sure, fuck it. Yeah. But what do you say like that's just the equivalent of like making a color grade decision though? Like for modern time. Because like, obviously mm. like we can, again, I can pick up that camera and that's just default color. Yeah. So, like, obviously, that, like, for us, it's a choice to make things in black and white now. So, wouldn't you just almost look at that like, well, that's a color grade in choice now? No. <laughs> I don't, no, I don't think I would. Because to me, it's like color grading is, is you know, highlighting certain aspects of your, of your image and, you know, it kind of getting the look that you want to go for. And I suppose black and white is kind of a look that you could go for. But no. But also, I don't know why right. I don't, but it's so, just kind of disconnected. So, me. is it more so you don't like it when someone's making that choice? To basically be like, oh, well, it's to reflect an older time period. Yeah. What aspect ratio is your film going to be in, Robbie? My f- uh, <laughs> my <laughs> Yeah, you fucker. <laughs> and my film is going to be in one by, what is it? One, one by 4.1 or something? Something like that. Yeah. And why is that? To go wide. Uh, but why do you want it that wide? Because I like the look of it. Because I, like, I think it looks really cinematic when something's really wide, like La La Land, which is a visual inspiration for my film. La La Land, who took inspiration from old musicals. Yep. I'm not saying anymore. It's a choice. Yes, it's it is. It's a choice. I accept <laughs> that your film is in black and white because I know that you're being inspired by the lighthouse and stuff and kind of like yeah. folklore and folk horror sort of stuff. That makes sense to me. Big gothic horror and that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That makes sense. You're inspired by things like Nosferatu and all old timey mm-hmm. 1930s black and white stuff. Yeah. Cool. That makes sense. Yeah. I'm not doing that for attack. It's more so yeah, like I'm no, doing no, it. Yeah, like, yeah. No, but like like that's so, that sort of thing. I'm like cool, black and white. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah. But like for things like like come on, come on. Did he give a reason as to why it's in black and white? He did, and I don't necessarily agree with his reason. Okay. Um. Again, he said like it was more so like the actual story did feel more like a fable. I can understand what he means in the sense of like, I can imagine this image of like an older person, like an older mentory person taking a younger person on, mm. a, on, a, tr- on a journey, okay. which is kind of what the film is. Okay. But that's not what I gathered from it. Again, yeah. as I said, it felt more like an Apple advert. Yeah. Because like, that's the whole feel of the film. It does feel very, like, mm. clean, sleek. Yeah. And it does feel like, and the type of black and white they do use, because it's not very contrasty. Yeah, it's just kind of like you've just monochromed it. Yeah, yeah, but really well lit and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. It feels more contemporary... Like, more contemporary photo shoot type of thing, which I feel like, and and again, I say this as well, it feels more like that type of thing, which could be more linked to the fact that he's a radio journalist anyway. Yeah. That links to that. To me, that's that, but that's the reason Mike Mills did give, which I don't, I don't agree. Yeah, so I mean, I'm, it's, 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 I'm not the director. I'm not the. I'm not the. I'm not the person who made that <laughs> choice. So who gives <laughs> shit? I'm, I'm not one to fucking say with it. But oh, really? My yeah. my personal. Yeah. Ready for number nine? Your number nine, yes. My number nine is. Um, we all thought. I know. I thought for quite some time, from about 2019, I thought, God, there is just no time to die, <laughs> and finally, in 2021, there was some time to die. Because No Time Snow came out finally after like three years or whatever. That's your number nine? Yeah, bitch. I'm genuinely blown away <laughs> by this. <laughs> yes. Right, I'm standing by it. Purely because, right, if you watched our, I think, I forgot which 
episode it was. Yes. But uh, we briefly gave a very brief. We we <laughs> we talked loads of Bond themes, and we, now let's give our like one sentence opinion on the new Bond film. And I was like, it's good. And yeah. you were like, I thought it was gonna be the best Bond film ever until the third act shat itself. Yes. So what? So why so, is this in your top ten? So I still agree with the sentiment of past Rob. Right. Yeah, yeah. Of as soon as we finished watching it, I believe I looked over to you and said that could have been the best James Bond film until they ran across the finish line with their dick out. That is exactly what you said. <laughs> which, which I still agree with. I think the third act kind of falls apart slightly, mm-hmm. right? But I've watched it again, and to me, it's still not my favorite Craig Bond film. No, that's still Skyfall because yeah. it's the best one. It is. Yes, it's just the Dark Knight, but with James Bond. But it's not a bad thing to just be. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Not a bad thing to, right. to just be. But No Time to Die, for me, when I kind of, I kind of sat back a minute and I thought, what were my actual issues with this movie? And my issues were Rami Malek. Yeah, the villain's not strong. The villain's not strong, right? And I don't really understand what his plan is. But then I sat back for a minute. I watched it through a new eye. Right? I mm-hmm. thought, just don't think about that stuff, Rob. Right? Watch it again. And watch what they're actually doing, right? And in my, when I watched it again, I was like, this is just a movie about James Bond as a guy. And who the villain's is. not the villain's not a big part of the it. The villain's no. not important. Like the need to obviously you need some big world ending threat at the end because it's James Bond. That's that's yeah. what it is. It's a, that's traditional James Bond. But like they've managed to tell a traditional James Bond story that is so personal. And so, like, this is who this guy is. Maybe he's afraid of that he's going to die. I don't know. Mm. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. like, it's just... Because I was worried they were going to do a thing because I was like, oh, he's retired, he's coming back out of retirement. I was like, didn't we do this in Skyfall? <laughs> I was, like, worried that we're That guy is again. always retiring. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, his, his entire career has been retiring. I'm off. What? Now Wait, I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, I, what I find funny is that in the continuity of those movies, Casino Royale is his first mission. Yeah. And Casino Royale and Quantum of Solace are kind of one big mission. And then the next time we I'm see done. him, he's retired. <laughs> he's like, like, what do you mean? Right, I've got my double O status. <laughs> I don't think that's I'll how it works, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's just like, and so he comes back into Skyfall. But anyway, No Time to Die, really cool. I think the twists and the turns it takes are sweet. I loved the direction. Kari Fukunaga. Kari Fukunaga. Genuinely, I fucking love the guy. Excellent. Dive. And it was really, really well directed. Yep. Um, Cinematography it, by uh, Linus Sandgren. Oh, it looks so nice. Guy, he, he's, he's, he, he, he shot the Harlan and First Man. Yeah. So, yeah makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's just, to me. Oh, he's, like, do, he's doing he's doing uh, Chazelle's other film as well. Oh, cool. So, yeah. He, like, didn't do, he didn't do Whiplash. Because, um, like, the, the Daniel Craig Bond movies kind of, after a while, got a bit kind of. Samey to I me. I think it's because we've had him for a while. We haven't had loads of films with him, but he has just been the Bond yeah. for like 15 years exactly. now. Well, and now it's kind of like, oh, we need to do something a bit different and whatever. And it's like, fuck it, kill characters off. Yeah. Reveal shit. Like, yeah, do, yeah, yeah. do stuff where it's like, yeah, this guy's an actual dude. Like, he gets hurt and he doesn't, like, yeah. <laughs> sometimes he's like, ah, oh, shit, my legs hurt and whatever. They use, they, they, those are the best type of Bond films where they m- emphasize the fact he's not an invincible mm. motherfucker. Yeah. It kind of, like, it felt like the equivalent for James Bond that, like, Logan was for Jackman's Wolverine. I can get that. It's yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. what it feels like to me. Older, um, more human. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the ending. No Time Dive. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I yeah. love the ending. Uh, it, uh, can we do spoilers on here? Spoilers for No Time and Die. If you don't want to know spoilers for the film, skip to my number eight. Yeah, there you go. He dies so fucking hard, man. They always make sure the fact of like, Daddy Craig's like, kill me, but don't just kill me, yeah, don't just nuke sh- me. Yeah, don't just shoot him or something, because then people could be like, oh, well, you know. Yeah, maybe he had a proof. Maybe had a proof. No, that man <laughs> is atomized. He is gone. The only reason why we didn't see more was the films were restricted by his 12A exactly, rating. Exactly. We- <laughs> that dude is a scorch mark <laughs> at the end of that movie. And it is kind of perfect. It's kind yeah. of the perfect ending that I'd want. Craig, I'm not sh- this might be Craig's best acting as Bond. Oh, definitely. It's his best performance. Say, I would say Let's so. say dude's fucking great oh, as well. Yeah. I think that it does a lot to kind, kind of, of convince me Spectre. of their relationship. It kind of redeems Spectre a bit, yeah. I think. Spectre's fine, but I'm not emotionally attached to anyone no, in exactly. Spectre. I like the, the 
the relationship between him and Madeline Swan, I never really bought. But it like, felt a bit odd because it did feel like you're you're an old man. She's like in her twenties. This is fucking weird. But like in this, with no time and die, it does feel like I can feel there's an actual yeah, exactly. connection and going on. some of there with them. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I just I really liked it and I liked what they did with the character of Bond. Yeah, and I, he felt like the quintessential Bond to me because he was funny and he was a bit quippy. But he's also real dark and not a great bloke, actually. Real he's not a joke. <laughs> he's not a joke jukebox. Exactly. I loved the bit with Anna de Armas. Yeah, yeah, best, yeah, yeah. I was probably the best say. sequence in the movie for me. Maybe not. Maybe not my favorite sequence, but it is a classic. Yeah. Really I like the bit when he's drinking a martini or whatever. Yeah. It, <laughs> good on him. Again, he just stops it's weird because I feel like there's so much you can still do with the Bond character, but I don't feel mm. like anyone does anything different with him. Yeah. I'm not saying this was groundbreaking for the Bond character, but no, I'm no, saying but like there, it was this it felt it had a little bit of a ooh to it. Yeah. I'm right? not being funny. We've had. It's been the, it's gonna be 60 years this year mm. since like Bond, and oh, I feel yeah. like people just kind of stick with the same Bond. I'm like, yeah. can we do like maybe like a little bit of like a little zhush, bit different? Yeah. And this is th- there's something here. Yeah, there's definitely. Something here. Like, yeah. Again, Anna Darmas, I'm fine with. I, yeah, I'm, I really liked her. So she was great, yeah. Again, I said this to you when like before you even saw the mm. film. I mean, like, you can, you can tell what Phoebe Waller-Bridge wrote. Yeah, <laughs> it's, that, it's that sequence. It's that, <laughs> it's that, it's that scene. scene. And, which, yeah. And the stuff with Lashana Le- 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 Lynch, probably. Yeah. Feel, and I'm feels fi- that way, right. which I was fine with. I'm fine with yes. her entire involvement with the film, mm. in all honesty. I, rem- yeah. I think I remember you not being totally hot on it at first. Yeah. I, yeah. But I feel the fact of, like, that it doesn't stick out loads in my mind proves that it, like, her whole character does her yeah. job fine. Yeah. I think the the only reason it's because the fact that the she because the fact that she's a she is 007 and the fact yes. that that's not a big like hindrance or a big anything to me yeah shows that they did it well enough to be yeah, like exactly. oh I'm not angry or like pissed off yeah. or whatever because who because who cares cause I, people it, it, would she not she, they're not saying she's born they're, they're, she's, they're, they're saying, saying she's that she's the next 007 because yeah. he's fucking gone so they need yeah which is fine that, yeah. that's absolutely fine. I think the only reason it kind of bugged me the first time I saw it was probably, like, because she was argumentative, and sometimes it was, like, the, the kind of the back-and-forth hair and Daniel Craig had sometimes was kind of weird and kind of forced mm. in, in my head. But, like, again, on, on a rewatch, it doesn't no. it doesn't bother me at all. No. I, I think again, the main hit anchor of the story is Bond and Madeline. Mm. That is the and, me- and that's done very very there's well. There's loads of things going on around it, yeah. but that's like the story yeah. realistically. I loved the bit with Billy. Is it Billy Magnuson? Is that his name? The guy that was like Felix is is like Jeffrey Wright's right. Oh man. yeah, they yeah, turned yeah, out yeah, to be yeah. an evil man, and yeah. then killed Jeffrey Wright, and then yeah. Bond like fucking crushed him with a car or whatever. Jeffrey Wright. Oh, what a, what a yeah this what a, what a time this man's having. What a time. What a time. I can't wait to see him in Batman. I can't wait to see him. The action oh. was fucking good in No Time to Die. It is. That, uh, that, uh, it wasn't the opening. Or was it the opening? I can't remember. In the, 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 the one that everyone saw in the trailer. Yeah, the yeah. The, bridge the, yeah, yeah, he jumps on in. Like, cool. That's the opening. That was cool. The fight in the forest is sick. Yeah. That shot where the where the truck like goes over a ramp and it goes off his head. Yeah. And still, like, yes. And he's like tracking it. Oh. Some of the best action. It's like, so the, cool. The, like, yeah. It's the bit where in the bridge where he like hides behind just a bit of a bit of like brick yeah. wall, mm. and then the car that just like he just m- m- just, just barely gets. Him. Yeah. That's the shit I like in shit yeah. like this. I don't want him like jumping on the car and going blah 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 as it's yeah, moving. Exactly. I yeah. kind of want him, like fuck, let me dodge yeah. this. And, like it, it's really well. It done. felt kind of more Mission Impossible. It did. It did. In terms of it being like fuck, that looked real. That and I, and I, 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 oddly enough, I think it's films that try to do Bond are never a success. That never yeah. shit. And I, because I feel like, I feel like. When Bond is at its best, but it's when Bond adapts to the action scene of mm. the time, I think. Because mm. I think, like, definitely. Because like the sixties was just, you know, espionage. Yeah, so. it was. They kind of did a bit Hitchcocky at times with like some of the sixties yeah, stuff. Seventies was a bit more fun and campyish type yeah. of thing. Eighties was a bit more. I mean, the Dalton ones kind of experiment would be doing a bit more like brutal, yeah, batshit action stuff. The nineties were very. You look at the Brosnan films, you go, that's just 90s encapsulated. Yeah, that that's is. a man surfing on a wave, it yeah. is. Don't tell you. Yeah. But then, <laughs> and then and then when Craig came along, they basically looked at, like, like for Casino Royale, they were like, okay, what action films like do really well? We're now born. Let's try yeah. like go to that. And I feel like 
they probably did look at like this decade's yeah. last action and be like, okay, what's really worked well? Yeah, Mission Impossible's worked. Mission Impossible well. does well. Deal with that. John Wicky sort of stuff in there. I, as well I have s- I've said that they what would be really cool is if for the next Bond, mm. if they do like pull on like John Wick type of aesthetic, oh, that'd be cool. Man. Just like <laughs> yeah, that'd be pretty good. I mean, for me, in my head, that would be a Dan Stevens as Bond in that, that type sounds of cool. in that type yeah. of atmosphere. I mean, in my but. in my head, I want them to take it back to the sixties. I want big old clunky gadgets. I want them to have a big stupid jetpack and whatever. I, <laughs> that's, that's, I mean, you could. Work. That's what I want. I want a big. In my head, in time. my head, then you get Ryan Johnson to do that. Then. Yeah, exactly. Because he can yeah, do he that can type do that. of shit. Exactly, give him a big stupid like I don't know, because like everything, all the gadgets like a, like now, a kni- like a knives out tone, but Bond. Yeah, yeah. yeah like, all, all the gadgets now from are like well. you can do, do a lot of that stuff on on like a smartphone, like a lot of the gadgets mm-hmm. that you had back in the sixties. But then if you like take it back to so the do you, oh, do you 60s, think they should, it would be cool to like actually like have it set? In oh yeah, the I mean like X Men First Classic kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, that could be yeah. cool. That's that's what I would be about. Yeah. I think Matthew Vaughn would be a good. Director for a bomb. I've always thought that. That'd be cool. I've always thought that. Give him a break from King. Can you stop Kingsman and actually do that? Yeah, yeah. Can you stop doing Kingsman and actually? Yeah. Do another thing. Spoiler alert, everyone. The Kingsman isn't on my list because it sucks. <laughs> it fucking blows. And what number was that? Uh, that was number nine. Jesus Christ, this is gonna be a long one, Robbie. It is <laughs> number eight. Let's go. My number eight. <laughs> my number eight, Robbie. Yes. We did a a neon film oh. from with Petite Mama, as yeah. in like that's the company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we did a twenty four. Okay. We're back with neon again. <gasps> this was France. This is France's. Uh, oh, is this what I think it is? This is uh, my number eight. Is uh, France's selection in the Academy Awards? Everyone knows it when I say this. It also won the Palme d'Or. It's Julia Ducca now's Titan. <laughs> <laughs> and now Robbie hasn't seen this, but I've told many. I told Robbie the whole fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to watch it. I don't, don't, don't want to watch, watch it. I don't want to watch it. And his reaction there has now made me now log it in my head of being like, maybe a commentary. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, no. Right. Titan. Yeah. It's the Palm Door winner. Yeah. It's a bold move for Khan to name this the Palm Door as well. <laughs> I didn't know that this uh, was what was. This one, the, the fucking selection. Palm Door. This is what France have been like. You know what? We're going to submit this for uh, the Academy Awards. But you nutcases. <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> could have a nice little time about a mother and daughter and time travel or whatever. Or no. a woman fucks her car. <laughs> what, what, do you, what do you want? <laughs> and it's meant... Right, okay, so... Titan, right? I've kind of become a big fan of Julia Duca now. Yeah. Um, she did a film called Raw, which I liked a lot as well, which is a coming-of-age film, but also cannibalism. <laughs> yeah, I watched. The, we watched the trailer for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, not my thing. I don't think, to be honest. I knew a body horror guy. Nah, I felt real ill watching the trailer. To be honest, <laughs> I didn't feel good. One right. One thing I've realized, right, is the thing. Yeah. Can I tell you that I fully grasped everything that was happening in Titan as I was watching it? No, I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell you that I could fully grasp everything, right? But also, I fuck with it hard. <laughs> oh God. And one thing I really wait. One thing mm. I kind of like, I, I through my doing my dissertation on post horror. Yeah. I looked at like what is fear and what the variations of fear, and then I had a look at a little bit the new French extremity, which I mm. guess you can kind of throw Titan in there. New French extremity. I don't know if you know anything about it, Robin. No, <laughs> it's no a, I do not. It's a movement within like the late nineties, two thousands. Technically, it's technically still going. Where it's just where French filmmakers just made really fucked up films oh. for the sake of fucked up right okay and it um it kind of, and that kind of i forgot the exact like terminology for it but it, it it's meant to more explore the uh the more like um unsettling just more unease feeling okay. so it's not yeah. th- these aren't films ne- these aren't films designed to put fear or scare yeah, you it's yeah, more yeah. induced to shock you and more to like disturb okay. and just really like fu- again it's french extremity so it's basically yeah. like, take it to like 10 but then break the switch while you're at it yeah, yeah. i ex- i think i told you about uh the film irreversible yes yeah that's part okay. of the french, new yeah, french yeah. extremity that the film sense. martyrs is a part of the new mm-hmm. french extremity and the reason why i bring that up is because i feel like right i love a nice little happy time with a film <laughs> talked about it with petit maman Talked about, well, come on, come on. Yeah. We might talk about it in a little bit more with some yeah. of my films. And, you know, we've also discussed that, like, you know, 
just love a nice little happy time. Yeah. You you like you like your little like happy shit as well. I do. Most of mine are pretty happy. To be uh, honest, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm weird in the sense of like I kind of like when I'm kind of like in a certain mood, I kind of want to go down like a fucked. Up, I just want to watch the most fucked up shit. I just kind of, and I think what I've realized, I almost want an, an attack of the senses. Oh, yeah. And I don't know why. Yeah. I feel this is why, this is why I've not really fussed on a lot of Marvel shit. Okay. It's because I don't feel like it challenges me in any way of my senses. I, uh, feel like, I feel like I'm watching a bit of a blank canvas. Yeah. I feel like I'm watching plain white paper at some point. Oh, yeah. I almost want like a big fuck off canvas splash with paint to hit me in the face sometimes. Fair is enough. it necessarily pleasant? Probably not. Yeah. But digging me a fucking thrill? Yes, it did. <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> That's what it did. And there's so and, and yeah. So it's almost like I look at it like with films like this, especially Tea Time, where it's mm. like I don't quite understand what's going on, but I kind of feel like uh, uh, almost a visceral feeling. Yeah. Which is why I thank the fucking Lord that I'm not a drug addict because I feel like that this is oh my God. my emotions towards films like this, where like I'm aware that I'm watching something messed up and I'm mm. aware that I'm kind of experiencing a bit of negative feelings in myself. Yeah. But I'm kind of, but I lean into I'm it. I'm kind of vibing it. But I kind of <laughs> lean into it. I lean into it, which, thank fuck, I like watching films like this as opposed to, yeah, let me just drop acid. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. But apart from just a big old attack of the senses mm. that Titan is, it's because I went to see it with Joe. Okay. And <laughs> I bet he was having a great time. The film ended and he went like, I think I need to call my therapist. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. I'm not and, surprised. And then we also walked out and then he went, I think that might be the best film I've seen. <laughs> no, Joseph, no. <laughs> So I've got him on there. God got him on it. <laughs> but I think it's more so like, because, yes, you can be really wanky and pretentious with this film. You can be. Yeah. You could look at it where, yes, she is both the Virgin Mary and Jesus. You could look at it like that, and it's valid. You could also look at it where it's a bit of a modern telling of a Greek mythology. You can yeah. look at it like that. I can see that. I can yeah. understand it. That's not what I'm breaking it down to, though. No. It's... What I end up feeling with it, it's like, it's, I kind of like this really, like, because it all, one, it starts, it, uh, well, it doesn't start with this, but it has, like, this really beautiful one that yes. follows um, the main character, who this is her first film. Mm. Uh, yeah. Brilliant performance, by the way. The director, Julia Duck, and I found her, like, on Instagram. I was like, yeah, her. Oh, and that, and that's, how, and that's, yeah. how, that, that's how she got brought in. Yeah. But it kind of follows her through, like, this, like, car show. Mm. But it's also a party, but it's also a strip club. To <laughs> <laughs> see already, I'm like, what the f- what the fuck are we doing? What are we doing here? Like, what what is this? <sighs> and <laughs> and one and right and one thing right as well, because again, I I'll explain. It. Yeah, I, I, I realized I, there was a few mm. things I wanted to clarify before we got with our top ten. But I'm set, <laughs> okay. I'm but one of them, one thing I realized within, because obviously I said this last year, mm. I always like to base my lists of films kind of on almost a retrospective on how I have felt within the last year. Yeah. And one thing I've kind of discovered, one thing that I've looking at my list is a lot of my films include either the importance of music slash mm. dance. Yeah. And um, almost like people feeling stuck in their workplace in some yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. people getting obsessed with their work in mm. some way. Yeah. And there's there's not that element in Teton, but there's like mm. a moment, again, the opening, it's, there's no dialogue. There's just, you're basically just watching a whole like pole dancing strip act on a car. Okay. And to me, it's so beautifully shot. Mm. The lighting's great. Yeah. There's just something quite cathartic about watching someone okay. just just watching a really clean, uncut shot. Yeah. Doing like a fucking class ass dance. Yeah. <laughs> even if they are grinding on the car engine. <laughs> and it's almost like I'm more yeah. fascinated by everything I'm watching, but also kind of feeling a bit of like a rhythm to it. Okay. But also later on in the film. I'm not going to go into too many spoilers within the film, because mm. um, uh, I don't think I can. Yeah, <laughs> I, don't think I, could, I don't think I could accurately explain yeah. everything in the film. But then it does. J- so there's the shock. Mm. There's the visceral, like holy shit. Yeah. Fuck, that's like mental. Yes. Like, there's a moment where she like murders a house full of people, which is a brilliantly shot. Again, a wanna oh, yeah. as well at one that, point. That's cool. Yeah, really Sorry. cool. It, it, but it's almost humorous. I'm spoiling a little bit with that. Yeah. Like she ends up like killing. Um, cause she has like a hairpin mm. 
that's almost like a big long metal spike oh, sort yeah. of thing. So it's a cool little yeah, like yeah, yeah. she ends up like um getting with um getting with a lass who she dances with. Mm-hmm. Ends up um because yeah and she oh yeah since she's got like a metal a, t- a titanium plate in her after she crashed the car hence the name she's got a bit of she's got a bit of a a, a metal fetish I guess you could say okay which, yeah which I also learned is a fucking thing <laughs> really oh <laughs> yeah yes Robbie it is uh, so she ends up um <laughs> she ends up getting with a lass uh, that she danced with gets a bit too friendly with her nipple piercings. <laughs> You don't see anything quite too bad there. But also a little bit later on, she ends up stabbing the shit out of her. Right, good. In her house, and then that's it. You go, okay, things calm down, whatever. Mm. It feels a bit like the uh, the been American Psycho. I was like, hey, Paul! And then yeah. the big murder, then he sits and chills and listens to music. Yeah. Seems like that's what the scene's going to be. Then a girl comes walking down the stairs because um, housemate. Uh, and she goes, what the fuck? And then... Then she's dead. No, it's a bloke. It's a bloke first okay. who comes down. And then... She ends up killing him in the coolest fucking kill. Okay. And this is the same year the Halloween kills came out. The coolest fucking kill of the year. Yeah. Where you don't see it even, but you, oh boy, you hear it. She ends up getting like a wooden stool. Okay. Starts trying to jam it on him. And you see him trying to hold the leg of the stool over his face. Oh, no. Pushes in closer to her. You see the chair goes further down. You hear her. And then she sits yeah. on the chair for a bit. She sits on the stool, and then the camera pa- pulls out to yeah. see. It's a fucking cool image. Then a lass walks down, and then she goes, "Ah, oh, fuck! Now I have to kill her." And then it just becomes this really funny oh, fucking thing. Jesus where Jesus Christ! <laughs> so then, awful. so then you get I... fucked up shit like this out yeah. there. Right? But then later on, the film progresses into a really genuinely sweet story. D- does it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then there's another dance scene. Within in that situation where there's uh, Vincent Landon, Vincent Lund, Vincent Lund, I forgot how he pronounced yeah, his name, yeah, yeah. Uh, but he plays fucking brilliant by the way. Mm. He plays um, the guy that ends up taking her in, oh, yeah. um, sh- thinking that she is his son that mm. went missing when he was a kid. Right. Okay. Yeah. Again, yeah. yeah. Wild time. Brilliant. But there's a moment where he ends up dancing with her mm. in almost like a works party thing, mm. and it's. Really fucking sweet. Okay. Really lovely, actually. Yeah. Right. And again, there's another. There's an, it's another dance scene. Again, it's more. It's neon pink lighting. Yeah. That's happening. Cool class. Smooth camera works again. Yeah. But instead of almost like this visceral fucking psychosexual dancing scene that I'm watching, yes. it is almost more like a nice slow dance moment oh. to it. So again, the film balances like just dance. Yeah. In two very different cathartic ways right okay. really yeah and it's moments like that to where then i can understand how calm was like yeah the palm door because yeah, yeah it is french extremity and how fucked up it is yes and weird and fucking mental mm. but it is really kind of genuine and sweet but you must be wanky within the sense like what's the meaning behind all yeah of it? you can do that i didn't like what but, the you don't director need to said that. about it didn't she say something like do i do a canal. figure out you figure out whatever you think yeah which i agree like she has her reasons but she doesn't yeah. want to then be like this is the reason. Is that yeah. what you fucking Whatever. Fair enough. Right. Yeah. I couldn't be asked explaining everything. No, I mean, <laughs> that, that, I mean that. Uh, like to me as well, like film is, so, is such a personal thing because it's like, yeah, I exactly. could, like, especially with a film like this, from my experience, mm. I don't quite understand why I feel the way I do watching it. Yeah. But I know that I do have a feeling watching it. Yeah. Fair and enough. I don't want to, or, and I almost feel like I have my reason to why I connect in some way to this film. Yeah. I then don't want the filmmaker to be like, this is what it is. Yeah. And then be like, oh, so it doesn't have anything to do with what I feel. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Fair enough. Because I think it's, I mean, no one gives a shit like exactly like, no one's like looking at Titan and being like, but I need the answers yeah, to this. Yeah. It's not like it's not like it doesn't make sense in the grand scheme of everything. It's yeah. like, well, no, it's not. It's, yeah, just, it's, French it's, 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 a, it's a French film that won the palm door it's, it's not a part of a big franchise yeah. shit. it doesn't matter whatever yeah. um but it's really cool i she's getting more it's weird because she does lean in because i watched her short film that she did as well which mm. again once again delves into a bit of body horror type of shit yeah. one thing i've realized the thing with julia duke and I, she really loves to emphasize on like rashes <laughs> or, right. like, or so or like there's a period of time where someone is just in so much like fucking agonizing itch Right. Okay. There's like segments where 
she gets her carriage just to fucking scratch. Okay, no. And then you get a close-up on this really dry-ass piece of skin, and you just hear the... Ew. Gross. And then it gets louder and louder and louder, and I'm like, can we fucking move on, please? Uh, yes. Let's fucking move on. What is this? <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> but again, hey... I, I, I like films that at least give me that type of visceral reaction. Fair enough. And, I, and, I, and to me, the worst type of film is a forgettable film. Fair enough. Titan is not a forgettable film. Yeah. One bit. I would definitely return to it. Because mm. I do kind of want to... Because again, it's... Uh, again, it's not a film I'm going to be casually... It's not going to be a comfort film I'm sticking yeah, on every yeah, now yeah. and then. Yeah. If anything, I almost want to watch these types of films with people like you who yes. haven't seen them. And yeah. be like, fucking watch this. Like, and then, what the fuck is going I, on? I almost want to live vicariously through your first reaction again. Yes. <laughs> well, yes. Christ. Number eight, Titan. For some people, it's making their number one, which mm. God bless you. <laughs> I mean, good on you, you know? God bless Good on you. Not my number one because, again, yeah. it gives me one type of feeling. Yeah. Doesn't give me the. F- doesn't give me a full roundedness yeah. for me. But yeah, that's my number eight. Okay. My number eight, again, I'd like to I'd like to preface a few things here. Okay. So I go off for like saying in my top ten movies of the year, I go off what movies I went and just actually was like, that was a great time. I really enjoyed myself mm. there. Right? So usually Oscar y sort of not you, Oscar. Actually, I mean, kind of you, Oscar. But all, I mean these Oscars, but also you, Oscar. Kind of movies where it's like dramatic and cool and whatever, and it's really saying something. People are usually be like, those are the top movies of the year. For me, I'm like, yeah, I get, I mean, it's good. I respect it, but it's not really my deal. I like things where I'm like, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's not kind of my vibe. Cool as fuck. Um, so I really, really didn't want this movie to be on the list. I tried so hard. Okay. To get this off here. <laughs> right. <laughs> but, but every time I watched a movie that had been highly recommended or highly acclaimed, I went, did I enjoy it as much as that? Probably not. <laughs> so, I'm fascinated. So, for that reason, I say with, um, with regret <laughs> that my number eight spot is uh, Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings. I really didn't want this movie to be on this list <laughs> because by all accounts it's fine <laughs> it's good it's, uh, I, like, you yeah, know yeah, it's, uh, for, for me this year in terms of movies that i like which are go to the movies did i have a good time mm-hmm. yes was it cool yes cool there wasn't a lot of good stuff this year for me no personally um, um no i mean there's more stuff later on but um but Shang Chi is a movie that obviously they, they, they would have announced it fifteen years ago. Whatever the fuck they do with those Marvel movies, I know what I could put for my number th- for my third possible choice. But yeah, oh, I'm just don't because you'll get it right. I'm not, but I- <laughs> <laughs> Shang Chi. Yes, right. Whenever they announced it, it, it's the Marvel movies. They could have announced it in 1984 or something. I don't fucking know. That's what they usually do with these. I'm trying to remember like, when I heard about like, this. Here's movies that are coming in the next 17 years. I want to say 2018. <laughs> Probably. I wanna say- but I was, it caught me off guard because I was like, I don't know anything about that character. Yeah. That's cool. Good on you. And also, it opens up a new little little pocket of the Marvel Universe. Doing, yeah. Doing like cool kung fu stuff. Obviously, it's great for Asian representation in, in big blockbuster movies, which obviously does not happen enough. No. Um, and I was like, that's an opportunity to do something really fucking cool. Because in the comics, usually Shang-Chi doesn't have any powers um, at all. So you would just be a kung fu guy, which I was like, that sounds good. Because if you're g- in in a franchise like Marvel, where everyone knows Tai Chi or whatever, kind of yeah. everyone kind of does it. If you're going to do something about a guy that does martial arts, he better be the best martial artist you've ever yeah. goddamn seen. And it's great. The action's so cool. Yeah, I wish like, that was the only action scenes, if I'm being yes, honest with you. That's fine. I, like, yeah. Again, no, I mean those type of action scenes. Yeah, I wish those were the, yeah. it's kind of similar to to Bond for me. It kind of falls apart a little bit in the third act, um, but when it becomes kind of like his two big fucking dragons fighting each other or whatever, yeah. which is like <laughs> yeah, okay, I guess. Yeah, but right, like right. before that, it's actually a really cool, emotional, deep kind of family story. Simu Liu. Is he's so good. Brilliant. <laughs> he's so good. Brilliant. Where did he come from? Yeah. Exactly. Like, he did, like, a Canadian I forgot, sitcom. I forgot the name of it. He's in this... It's, like, some... Si- Kim's Convenience? 
Isn't that what it is? Yeah. I think that's what it is. Because his dad in that show is playing Iroh in the live that's action right. airbender show or whatever. Yeah, that's right. Which is Joe Christ. <laughs> Um, but like, just don't. It's, yeah, just don't do it. Kim's but convenience. Kim's convenience. Yeah, he he's great. He is like, he's up there with like, yeah, that's a great find for a leading man material. Mm-hmm. He is so charismatic. Is yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Like, like he's just charming, and I think he is a lot of the reason why the movie kind of didn't leave my head because when he's talking yeah. about it in interviews and stuff, he's so fucking excited. Yeah. To have the opportunity to do it. Um, and he's so excited about the movie itself and how it was made and all that kind of stuff. I watched the behind the scenes of it because because oh, yeah. Marvel started doing a thing, um, I can't remember what it's called, Assembled or something like that, mm. where they do like a, a like an hour and a half documentary sort of thing for each yeah. project that comes out to say, this is how we made it. Um, the behind the scenes stuff for that movie is very cool. Like, mm. so they do a lot about the, the kind of the action and all that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, the action's sick. I mean, that train, the, not train, bus. The, the bus. Yeah, yeah. Oh. oh, it's class. Oh, my God. That's, oh, it's good. That's straight up Jackie Chan shit. Yeah. Where he's, like, doing flips, and he grabs that lady's laptop or whatever. Good stuff. So, um, yeah, that would be my recommendation for, like, if you just want to have a nice little time, just watch Shang-Chi. Tony Leung. Tony Leung. Excellent. One of the best villains that they've had in a Marvel movie yeah, in a very I would agree. long time. He's, I he's, just one, he's just one of the best actors. He is great. He's, he's, he's fucking very brilliant. Good. Spoilers again, I apologize. It's a shame it's they killed him off. Shit. Yeah, fuck off. <laughs> why, would they, why, why would you kill him Come off? On. Come on. <laughs> the opening fight, well, no, it's not the opening fight, mm. uh, one of the earlier fights with him and his wife. Oh, the Crouching Tiger sort of style. Prop House of Flying Daggers. Yeah, I it's loved cool, it. isn't it? It's like, <laughs> where they're, they're all very clearly on wires and yeah, flying about and stuff. But then it's like, because it's supposed to be kind of a romanticized, like, past sort of thing, I'm like, yeah, it fits really well. Yeah. Because it could be, like, real goofy, which I kind of find that sort of stuff goofy sometimes. Like, it, kind of the... Like, within House of Flying Daggers? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's a bit goofy. I, I think like... it's more so Crouching Tiger, where Crouch... it gets a bit uh, goofy for Crouching me. Ti- yeah, but that's Crouching Tiger also introduced, like, this magical sword and shit. Yeah, exactly. Which I'm yeah. like... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the stuff where they're... Um, in Crouching Tiger, it's like when they're stood on top of like the big bamboo trees, yeah, and they're yeah, clearly yeah, just yeah. not stood on a branch. Like, I need, like I need to rewatch that film. Though, really. yeah. I feel like if like the visuals were a lot more bright with that film, yeah. I think that's why it works. If it looks like daggers and, and, yeah. and hero and shit yeah. like that, because it is more so feels like yeah, like but yeah, but yeah, Shang Chi. Mm-hmm. John uh, really tried to not have it on the list. I apologize, everybody. But it's not. But a it's bad. a good movie. <laughs> it's, it, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a good movie. And I'm willing, and I would be looking forward to seeing more of it. Yes. More. M- yeah. I, I'll be more I, yeah. in it. Like, um, and I'm not saying like this film blew me away. I'm not like, I need more of this. It's yeah. like, I want more of Simu Liu as Shang-Chi. Yeah. Yes. And I want to see more of what Shang-Chi yeah. does in the grander scheme of yeah, things. Yeah, same. I'm a little bit worried that they'll just go, make it bigger. Just yes. Bigger. I, 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 I hope that's not the case. Because they left it off with like something's coming or whatever. Yeah, but and also the rings. Are... I would just. I mean, have him. In, is it Wong? Wong. Yeah, Wong's pretty good. I would be okay if like he has more of a role in like yeah. Shang. Yeah, cool. like it. Yeah, get Wong in there. If you want to do more mystical, like big bollock yeah. shit, I'm fine with that. Yeah, implement and do it. Because it's like Wong. He's just like a. He's the sassy bitch of the Marvel universe. Yeah. He doesn't really care about what's going on. So for yeah. him to just kind of show up in Shang Chi and be like, "I'm doing this now. Who cares?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Doctor Strange's like, "Oh, I'm really struggling over it. Yeah, yeah, fuck yeah. it. I'm with Shang Chi. Doesn't matter." Yeah, exactly. Like, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, fine. Throw him yeah. in. Cool. But yeah, well, I know what you mean. I'd yeah. rather it be a smaller scale. I like the ground, the grounded side of the Marvel universe. A bit yeah, more. like we don't need. <laughs> it doesn't need to be big bombastic. In my head, as well, in time. my head as well, especially for the type of films they are, they want to be yes. more like like oh, we want to be more like martial arts, kung fu. Based. Yeah, they, yeah, they're never saving the world. Well, no, exactly. It, like, I mean, we talked about where the dragon. Thank you for nearly getting like, nine thousand views. Yeah, by the way, ridiculous. <laughs> what the fuck's happened there? <laughs> we still don't know why that's happening. Way, our way of the dragon podcast is nearly at ten k views. Let me look at like as of it, now. Because it's the only one that is like that. The rest, of, like, the next one down is, like, 600 or something. Which is Serpico. Yeah, yeah. like, wh- why, <laughs> why are you watching that one? Which, Tell us. We got nearly 68, we got 68 subscribers now as well. Jesus! Yeah. <laughs> 8.8k views, The Way of the Dragon. What the fuck? But, but those films, Yeah. I mean, we talk about it. We love fucking, yeah, we love big fan of that. Yeah. Bruce Lee isn't saving the world. He's saving. No, he's just saving like he's, he's a up, Chinese restaurant. He's, yeah, or something. He's, he's, he's helping this Chinese restaurant out. <laughs> yeah. That's that's all it is. You watch some Jackie Chan films. At most, he's like a policeman trying to like yeah. stop crime. Yeah, but that's still not him. No, exactly. I'm saying it's it's all, 
at most he's like, I'm saving this city. Yeah. I'm oh not even that, I'm saving this section of the city. Yes. <laughs> Whereas Shang-Chi, like, it doesn't need to he be fighting a big, a big fucking dragon. worm. Come yeah, on, a, bit, man, a big worm is. or whatever it was. I don't know. Uh, will we talk about another big worm? No. No. <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't worry, guys. Don't, don't even worry about it. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I liked the kind of more personal, character-based, family side of that story. Yeah, like that. I like... I like the stuff... It, how it, the kind of the linchpin of the movie is about the, is with the mum. Yeah. And how the mum died. And I like... Everyone dealt with it in their own different I like person. a part of the relationship between Simu Liu and Aquafina. Yes. Because I think there's something there. I just mm. feel like they shouldn't make Aquafina the comedic relief. Yeah, just don't make it so annoying. Because she, <laughs> cause she can be really good. Watch the farewell, everyone. If yeah. you if you haven't, yes. if, if you're against Aquafina and like she's annoying, well, just watch the farewell because yeah. she cannot be. Because she's great. Because <laughs> she's really good. Dare I say it's a bit of an Adam Sandler situation? Yeah. <laughs> dare I say? Uh, dare yeah. I say it's also a bit of a Jim Carrey? Yeah. Because <laughs> like for me, it's like. After a while, when you get Ben Kingsley involved, and like we don't oh, need two, that. that's we the, don't the, need two comedic relief characters. No, Chill out. No, exactly. You know, because I feel like they could have like you could make a you could make a funny. Yeah, but she doesn't need to be start singing Hotel California. Yeah, it's the worst part of the movie. <laughs> it's the worst part. <laughs> it is the worst part of that movie when she starts singing that song because the mm. all of the audio in the movie stops, and then she and just, it's just her, and it's like, oh, God, Awful. with wind in my head. Oh, uh, stop, oh stop it. I did appreciate, though, that it led to an after credit scene in which Wong is singing yeah. Hotel California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Good job, everybody. Anyway, your number seven. My number seven. Seven. Right. No, a little bit of add-on, because mm. I just want to say yeah. that I feel like this year, mm. being, being a bit of a weak year. Yeah, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. I feel, I feel, being kind of, I feel like we're, we're, we're coming back from the absolute fucking nuke of 2020. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like I feel like we're getting like, we're, we're returning to feeling like a normal year, but I still don't think yeah. 2021 felt like. I think 2022 hopefully will. Yeah, I feel like 2021 still felt like. I feel like 2021 still felt a bit of a ripple. Yes, it did. It did. Yeah. That being said, I still think similar to last year, the stronger mm. films that did come out were the more smaller films, mm-hmm. the more independent mm-hmm. based things. Um, this one is neither a neon or a A24 film. Okay. But it probably could have been. Breaking the trend. In re- yeah, for me at the minute, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we will return to it. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> we will return to it. But, so, we talked about a tiny film with Petit Maman. Yeah. My number seven is another small film. <laughs> it is episode five of the Book of Boba Fett, Return of the Mandalorian. No, it is not. <laughs> it is an hour and 16 minutes. Yeah. It is uh, Emma Seligman's Shiver Baby. Mm. Now, I think I briefly mentioned this to you. Yeah. Um, this is a film that is in my top 10 for one or two reasons. Okay. The first reason is I watched it and, um, it's a film that like the pl- the plot of it, it takes place kind of in one location ish type of thing. Um, this, um, soon to be college graduate girl, mm-hmm. um, who makes money, f- who funds her life for being, for, for having a sugar daddy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it's kind yeah. of like that yeah. thing. And um, she ends up going to a shiver, okay. which I didn't know until this film. It's a, it's is. kind of like a Jewish wake. Okay. But it's weird in the sense of it's not a wake in the sense of like if we would go to a funeral and we kind of like and you go to mourn and, and shit. Yeah. How it, it is almost like just another type of get together, but okay. it's like, oh, all the family comes around after the funeral and then mm. like fucking like, but then there's like a buffet it's still bullshit with yeah, family. Yeah, yeah. It's still just a general family. Like, hey, how yeah. you doing? So there's that. And then she ends up going to that. Mm. It's a bit of like a comedy drama-ish type of thing because there's okay. like a moment where she she goes to, she finally gets to the the plate, the house. She's mm. talking to her mum, rattles on, blah, 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 blah. Mum walks off and she goes, wait, mum, who died? <laughs> so it's, it's like, wait, who are we here for? <laughs> that was good. So it's, that was good shit. So it's like shit like that. And then the thing is, then, mm. th- but then it turns into fucking Safi Brothers anxiety and juice and shit. Oh, really? Okay. Where, where who only walks in but her sugar daddy and they go, oh, why are you here? It's like, why are you here? And it's just like, and it's like, oh, fuck. Are sake. they related? They're not related, oh, no. Oh, thank Christ. No, 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 no. Jesus. No, 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 no. <laughs> I thought this was taking no, a no. turn. But then it becomes like a thing where like, he is... He's kind of like, he used to work for her dad. 
Okay. Type of shit. Yeah. But then they also found out, oh, it's like, oh, where's your wife at? Mm. Go, oh, your wife, eh? <laughs> Who's also got a baby. So then it becomes like, it just becomes a really, but then also in this situation, who's also at the shiver mm. is, um, um, let me look up the character's name, the main character's okay. name, so I can stop saying, and then this person, and this person. <laughs> uh, Danielle. Okay. One of her exes oh, is also there. And then she's like, yeah, why didn't you call me back then? Mm. Oh, I didn't think it was like a proper thing. So it's like, oh, okay. it's, a, it, it's, it's a really cool, it, it gets branded as an LGBT film because technically mm. it's a bisexual, because she's yeah. bisexual, but yeah. it's not a thing. Okay. That, yeah, that's yeah. not a thing yeah. at all type of thing. So then there's just multiple types of like mm. anxiety inducing moments. Yeah. The reason why I almost say I prefer this to a film like Uncut Gems mm. is because I find it more relatable in the sense of you feel a little bit of like an out, not an outcast, yeah. but like, do you ever feel like a sore thumb within in a family gathering? Yes. When you kind of just like stood yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, oh, so what have you been doing? Yeah. Oh, just, you know, just studying. Yeah. But that's not what's on your mind. No. It's like, yeah. but she's not going to go, oh, my sugar daddy's here. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's not what, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, you're yeah. not going to be like, then being really open about like, mm. oh, well, I'm having really bad love issues right now. It kind of sucks. Every, everything yeah, sucks. Yeah. Right. He's going, yeah, no, I'm just studying. <laughs> oh, what do you want to do after that? Oh, well, we'll no, just see. Yeah, yeah. Which again, we're graduating this yeah, year. Yeah. So I'm watching this film being like, oh, this is. Yeah. <laughs> this is. yeah. So it's like that type. Of but then they do a really cool moment. Like they really kind of like play on the anxiety where like she's almost forced in a situation to be in a conversation with someone mm. that she couldn't give a fuck about. Yeah. But she has to be. But also who's in that conversation is her sugar daddy, oh, who he's Christ. also really fucking awkward at this time. But then also his wife's there with the baby, who's just crying. And so then the film almost bounced. So then the film almost has the conversation in the back mm. with the baby crying, just more yeah. so relevant. And just these really like close ups. And the score is basically a horror score as well. Right. So it just becomes a really not great time. <laughs> it's really, it's super fucking like anxiety inducing. Yeah, yeah. But then again, but then it's also just really fucking funny because mm. it is a bit of like a, you know how we always say like some of our favorite moments is like just when nothing can go right for the characters. Yes, yeah, it's very funny. It's this yeah. film, <laughs> like this film is just nothing's going right yeah, for yeah. her, no matter what. Or like, hey, so it's looking good for her. No, nope. and then shit just happens. Yeah. So it's like that. That's one reason why it's on my list. Mm -hmm. Then another thing was, and then I watched a, a few interview because then on Mubi, yeah, so I watched it. Uh, they have like a Q and A with the writer and director Emma okay. Selgman hmm. after, and I was and then so and then I watched a few more interviews with her. I'm like, she looks kind of young. I wonder how old she is. Hmm. She's only a month older than me, Robbie. Jesus Christ, <laughs> the fuck! So then I start having a bit of a moment of like, what the fuck is any? Yeah, well, what the fuck <laughs> is this? And I found out because this film Shiver Baby is uh, a feature adaptation of a short film she did. Oh yeah. Her short film, Shiver Baby, mm. was her thesis film for a final year wow, of college. Yeah. So she made that film, yeah. did it, and then basically when she graduated, then she started working on the feature script, and then when she was 22, oh, wow. started putting together funding yeah. and started actually trying to like build it. Sick. So that's I'm pretty, looking at that's that. Pretty sweet. So then the pre so then there's moments like that where I'm looking at this film. Like this is a generally fucking class yeah, yeah. film, and it's not a big film. Again, it's oh, yeah. small, one location. Mm. No massive name. There's a few like there's like Molly Gordon. There's like a few like yeah. There's a few like names, yeah, but yeah. not like there's no Bill Murray or whatever. No, like, yeah, yeah. So but so then it's like that could still get that still got a release and mm. that still did fine with it. So then this has put me in the mindset of like nothing's stopping me from looking at like a graduation yeah, and then yeah, just yeah. immediately doing a film yeah. again. This is an hour sixteen. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't even need me. No, yeah, massive. Exactly, yeah. So. Sweet. So it's a it's a film that's like one it's a fucking class film anyway. Yeah. Again, it's my type. It's funny. Yes. Funny as fuck. It's tense. Yeah. Really well acted. Mm -hmm. Just, I, again, I love shit like that where it's I love like almost kind of slice. Again, this isn't a slice of life, but it's a situation mm. that is just a life thing. Yeah. Where we just kind of like then focus on like the awkward real lifeness that yeah doesn't get focused in films as much, but is really relatable. In yeah. Like awkward family gatherings or like. A bit of a messy date in life, yeah. you know, like yeah, shit yeah. that doesn't get really focused in, but is kind of cool to actually look in. It does that, yeah. but also a bit of an inspiration in the sense of like 
shit, why can't I do that? Yeah. So, yeah. Shiver Baby, if you're in UK, it's on movie. Give that Ooh, a watch. Good shit. I recommend it. Again, not a long film at all, so... Yeah. Sounds Give it a go. I, 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 like I quite enjoy it. I think you, I think you yeah. would like it. That sounds yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. sweet. My number seven is... Uh, my phone keeps... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, uh, we, we haven't got a phone. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. my, my phone keeps telling me that my call that I had with my girlfriend last night is, is ending. Yeah, it's not... And I'm like, yeah, I know. I ended it at 11 o'clock last night, but I can't get rid of it. I don't know why. Oh. I, no, I, have to, I can swipe up oh, from right, it and get rid okay, of it every right. time. Anyway, so... My number seven <laughs> is is a film that was released straight to streaming, um, which is upsetting because um, I think it would have done really well theatrically. But my number seven is Luca. Oh of, yeah, a Pixar movie of this of this year. It's really good. Um, it's really great. I like, think it's my favorite anime. It's not on my list, but it might be my favorite animated film of the year. I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it is because mine. Yeah. I don't have any other ones on there, and it's yeah, definitely yeah. not in Kanto. I tell you that much. Um, Mitchell's versus machines is good. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's alright. I I wanted it to. Be, I wanted that one to be on my list, but I it just I, yeah yeah no. Um yeah sorry. Public service announcement for Encanto. By the way, everyone stop using the fucking songs on TikTok. It's doing my head in. Stop it. And this is someone who doesn't have TikTok, so you're still somehow seeing. Yeah, exactly, I'll still see him just on YouTube or whatever. Just uh, yeah, we know we don't talk about Bruno's a good song. Shut up. Will it win the award? Probably. Yeah. Sadly, yes, probably. Oh, yeah, because the other musicals aren't original songs. Exactly. So West Side Story, some good bops there, but that's not yeah. going to get. It's going to be that, or it's going to be something from Tick, Tick, Boom. Not so an original song. But one of, there was a couple that were, weren't there? Were there? I think there was a couple that were... I thought all of them were written by Jonathan Larson. They were written by not. Jonathan Larson, but they were never released. So maybe that... Swimming, I think that was not... Yeah. Does that count, though, if it was written beforehand, but just not released? I don't I'm know. Sure. I don't know the rules. I don't uh, know the but list. yeah, I don't know the it'll probably go to... We don't talk about Runa, um, which sucks, because it's... I mean, it's a great song, but everyone keeps doing it. But Luca. Anyway, Luca. Great movie. Every, uh, yeah, loved it. I think... Um, it's nice change of pace for Pixar. Very much so. It's like it's quite. It doesn't. It feels weirdly, and I mean that it like in in a good way. It feels more like the Disney animated films than it does Pixar films, in my head. Okay. It doesn't feel like a Pixar movie because it's not trying its hardest to make you cry for no reason, which Pixar seems to do now in my eyes it feels like they make a movie because they go what would what would bring someone to tears but i think it doesn't necessarily still feel like a disney film because it's not trying yeah. to, it's not trying to be the in thing which is what exactly. i think disney which films Disney's do it's like, to do, yeah. oh what can we get a lot of kids to love yeah luca like, oh, isn't trying to be we'll get lin manuel miranda to do the music <laughs> what, do you, what do you want i love lin but yeah, but christ <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> so, but like luca feels it different. It feels very singular. It's a nice breath of fresh air. In it's like that, an hour and a half head. as well. So again, exactly. It's, not it's easy breezy. Lovely little time. Um, but yeah, for Pixar at the minute, it's like soul great. I I enjoyed it when it came out. In emissions film of the year of twenty twenty. Apparently, <laughs> it, it I enjoyed it when it came out. But then it's like, oh, it's an existential thing about a guy and whether he loves his craft or and he's dead or whatever. Hell yeah! It's like let's make it, let's make you weep for no particular reason. And then it's like, oh, we're gonna do a like a magical fantasy movie, and they're like, oh, that doesn't sound like it can make people cry. Oh, well, what if their dad's dead? So, oh, okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> Which one's enough. that one? Onwards. That Tom, oh yeah, Tom I did Holland, see. Chris yeah, Pratt, yeah, the elves yeah. or whatever. It's like, oh, we're gonna do a fantasy like buddy road trip thing. And they're like, oh. That's not. That doesn't sound that sad. And they're like, oh well, what if we throw in that their dad's dead, and the reason they're going on the road trip is to bring their dad back to life for twenty minutes, and then one of the brothers doesn't get to see the dad at the end. Does that sound like it'll make you cry? Yeah, <laughs> oh, we'll do that then. Whereas Luca did make me cry. Oh actually. yeah, I got emotional. I didn't I cry, but I did. I, yeah. I had a little, 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 little one of them. Yeah, because like, but it does it organically through me just. Giving a shit about the characters. These are some of my favorite Pixar characters. Yeah, January, yeah, they're yeah, great, yeah. and I, I love the relationship between the two leads. Yeah, yeah Luca yeah. and the other one. I forgot his name. I Jacob Tremblay was the voice of Luca. Yes, uh, love that the guy. The other guy was. It's the kid that's. Um, the one that Shaz- is it Shazam's mate. I think it's Shazam's mate. He's in yeah, uh, yeah, 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 Jack yeah. Dylan Glazer. Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He he was the other one. I like him a lot. It, it's Eddie from Eddie yes. from it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he's yeah, he's good. Um, 
and there was a there was a girl called Julia, who did not spell that way. Not spelled that way. Who spelled when, when, yeah. when we when we watched the movie, that racist, my sister yeah. was like, "That looks like a little animated Julia," and then her name was Julia, and we were like, "Ah, uh, well, <laughs> that's what I'm saying." But it doesn't look like Julia, so. Yeah. I mean, she's just because she wears big jeans. I think. I think that That's was the. A, I think that was the only reason. Um, but my, yeah, Maya Rudolph is also in the film. She's the mum, isn't yeah. she? Yeah. That's the only little. Hmm. I'd take that out. The little subplot with the parents coming on lands try and find Luca. Yeah. It just keep yeah. cutting back to him. I'm like, why are we doing this? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> like, it's not there long enough to wear no, it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But I love the kind of the feeling of the movie. Right, this is exactly the type, like, when, with the, everything I was saying about Days and Confused is mm. kind of everything I would transfer my feelings to this. Yes. I love the summer vibe of it. Yes. And it does just feel like a bit of a chill hangout at times. It feels like a lovely little summer holiday, and you're watching these two kids having a great time and thinking that the world is their oyster or whatever, which is like, yeah, that was what Brilliant. we used to do when we were kids in the yeah. summer. Like, you know, and they're like, we're going to make a moped or whatever. <laughs> or yeah, 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 yeah. We're going to buy a moped I love something. the villain with the shitty mustache. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. The villain isn't, so, it's not some big world anything. The whole movie it's is just... shit kid. It's, it's, just, just, <laughs> it's just them trying to win a race. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And the villain is just a shithead kid yeah. who's being like, fuck you, you're not fast enough. But he's like 16. He's like, yeah, he's like yeah, six yeah, years yeah. older than all of them. And he's like, you really shouldn't be doing this race yeah, anymore. Yeah, it's like, up. And he's like, well, yeah, yeah, I'm the best racer in the town. <laughs> I mean, like shit like that I'm like yeah little small scale yeah lovely little character driven movie where I care about the characters and also even like when people find out that they're mermaids or whatever spoilers they're mermaids I don't know if that's a spoiler that's a plot <laughs> Every, everyone's a mermaid don't worry about it like that's that stuff's great I love it I lo- it's, it's a like, great little time I like uh, Julia's reaction to it yeah because it's like when they see um, Alberto Alberto is his yeah, name. Yeah, when Luca... It's like, no, he's oh, a sea yeah. monster. Yeah. And then it's like, Julia's first reaction is like, oh, no, shit. Yeah. And then when then it's not... Very soon after, then Luca gets water splashed yeah, in. Yeah. And then she's like... <sighs> Come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not in a sense of like, ah, monster. It's like, yeah. oh, why did that after? Yeah. Like, it's like, just like uh, disappointed. She's not even like, upset. Like, well, you're a sea monster. It's like, yeah. just why did you have to fucking yeah lie? Yeah, why'd you lie about it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Which uh, like, again, yeah. I like that because again, people, and I can see where people can like get this idea. Mm. I mean, we joked in the sense where we first saw the trailer, was like, oh, this looks very gay. But like, yes, but like, and. Yeah, I can see what people, but it is there is a legitimate like line in to the fact of it being an LGBT yeah, story in the sense yeah. of like a very traditionalist village, mm. very conservative type of village. Yeah, and it's like people trying to hide who they are. Yeah, and when they discover who they are, they get a bit like yeah, ah, fuck yeah. Bit, yeah. yeah, there's a bit of that, and there's also you see, uh, although the director and writer has say no, it's a purely platonic film. Mm. And then people go, nah, just bullshit, just say it's a gay film. Which I'm like, I don't yeah, agree. Because well, yeah. it's like, yeah, you can look at that. But then I also find it's like, well, why do two boys who are just really close to each other, mm. why does that mean, oh, you're gay then? Yeah. yeah. Like, why can't it be like, no, you're just, they're just really platonically close. Yeah. Which yeah. I like that as a message in the film in the sense. Yeah. It's like, you could be like, you could love someone yeah. without being right, romantically, romantically involved yeah. with them, which I yeah. I like that. Yeah. And again, there's a, there's a bit like he's not jealous that he's hanging around with Julia because he's like, oh well, I want to kiss him. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's like I thought we were. I thought, I thought we, we were going to do all this. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I thought we were going to get when yeah. go to school and travel the world. I thought we had a. I thought yeah. we had a well, friendship I we had and a shit thing going. Yeah. I I also love the, the ending's beautiful. The ending is so say, beautiful. All I'm saying is. If yeah. you if you're ending a film, one thing I've discovered, I think if you just got a train in your film, I'm just gonna <sighs> love it. Because <laughs> that, that you could call that me by your name, like, oh, Jesus. You could call me by your name, which yeah. the film basically is awesome. Yes, it, yeah, it feels a lot like it. There's one peach fuck away from it just being yeah. called <laughs> by your name is all I'm saying. Yeah, there's, oh, pretty much. There's like, but like, you got called by your name. You got the bef- before sunrise. Yeah, yeah. you got five hundred days of sun, which has a train bit for a bit. Yeah, but like anyway, Eternal Sunshine also has a train. Yeah. so just. Just, just throw a train in. Train, train in. I'm gonna yeah. fucking cry. <laughs> I love, I love the dad. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, love yeah, his. Yeah. I love yeah. how his face is 90 percent chin. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I also love how it's like he first starts telling a bullshit story about oh, how he yeah. lost it. I was like, no, I'm just born this way. Yeah. It's it's like, oh, like, oh, what a great lad. <laughs> what a great guy. Like that from that moment onwards, I was like, this guy's gonna be my favorite character. Yeah. And then he was one of the ones that made me cry because I cried when the train was happening because mm-hmm. obviously. But also, the bit when Alberto's gone, 
And he, and he's like, where's Alberto? And they're like, oh, Alberto's gone. He's like, is he coming back? <laughs> it's like, oh, Jesus. It's just this, like, huge yeah, yeah, yeah. rhombus of a man. <laughs> just, like, <laughs> this huge, like, 60-year-old fridge being yeah. like, is he coming back, though? Oh, he was a cool I guy. <laughs> I love it. It's, yeah. The animation I like a lot. I love the style of it. It doesn't look like your traditional picture. That's what I'm saying. That it's very adds different. To the, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I, it's nice, quirky. Yeah, but without being wanky, quirky. Exactly. They, that's I get uh, again. I look again. I love Soul. Yeah. Inside Out is my favorite Pixar mm-hmm. film. Again, I love the Pixar Ups. Great. I yeah. love the I love the films mm-hmm. that like are like oh. whoa, like just fucking like get me at the heart. Yeah. But also, oh, hello, hello. this gets me at the heart as well. But more so for like a relatability but, yeah, point of I view. Yeah, because I care about the people. Yeah. And know? again, I almost feel like I would have been in that group with the three. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. 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 Like, it's relatability. Like it's like. Mm-hmm. It really gets the essence of just feeling like a kid, right? Yes, exactly. Because it's it's for me why I think it succeeds where previous Pixar films kind of fail for me is doesn't it doesn't feel strategically chemically engineered to make you cry. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. It just kind of <laughs> organically gets you emotional because you care, and that's why mm-hmm. I love it. And it's my number seven, seven. spot seven. <laughs> on the list. Jesus Christ, number six. My number six, right? Let's go. Okay. Um, I haven't really got a lead in with this one. Oh, yeah. We're back with Neon. So that's right. my third Neon film. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think it's my it's the final, yeah, it's the last Neon film. Okay. Uh, good shit, yeah. They, they also did Parasite and Paul Trevor Lady on Fire. Okay, yeah. Good cool. shit. Good shit. Uh, but my number six is uh, Pablo Lorraine's Spencer. Ooh. Uh, this was almost not on my list, but then it was one of these things where like, I just kept thinking about it. I was like, it's yeah. a really fucking good yeah, film. Yeah. Um, this film, Spencer, it's I, it, it follows... Uh, Princess Diana. Yes. Uh, again, two years in a row that Kristen Stewart is in a film on my list that mm. takes place during Christmas. <laughs> yeah, good on it. <laughs> good on you, Kristen Stewart. 2022, let's have another Kristen Stewart Christmas film. <laughs> and then we, yes, yeah, we keep it going, keep yeah. it going. But uh, it takes place over the three days of uh, Christmas, December 1991, okay. I think. I yeah. can't remember. Specifically, the, around mm. about that time. But with, um, but with Kristen Stewart as Princess Diana mm. and... A lot of people may look at that and go, oh, is it just a biopic on Diana? Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, is it like her getting married to Charles? No. And is it, is it towards the end of her life? No, it's in the point of her life where she's starting to doubt her yeah. relationship within the royal family. Yeah. Um, and it is a really, uh, first of all, again, the big hype that this film is getting is Kristen Stewart's performance, mm-hmm. which I'm a little bit worried that she might not even get the Oscar because she's not, she hasn't been nominated <laughs> at the Guild. The Screen Actor Guild. Yeah. But yeah, she's winning loads of fucking awards with it, though. I think yeah. she is the one winning the most awards, but not the ones that matter, I don't think, in terms right, of if you okay. want an Oscar yeah. campaign. Because uh, I do think she generally did give up the best uh, lead actor perfor- lead actress performance yeah. of the year. Um, and with a film like this, you would almost... Because these films, these types of films, they almost only get looked at like, oh, it's just the lead actor. Mm-hmm. So that's the only thing that's holding this film up. Yes. Happened with the Iron Lady with Mel Streep as Margaret Thatcher. Yeah. Happened with Renee Zellweger as Judy Garland in horror films. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, not great. Judy. It's fine. Um, <laughs> um but then but so I was thinking to myself, oh, is this just gonna be kind of like that? Mm. Where it's like, oh, every, the film is fine, but well, people would just talk about it because Kristen Stewart has Princess Diana. But the film is just really well fucking made anyway. The film yeah. is uh, shot by the same cinematographer who shot Poor Trevor Lady on Fire right, okay. in a, a beautiful 16mm film. Um, and the, the colouring is really well done because, of course, you've got almost like like uh, pale colours for mm. Palace and all that. But then they do a really cool choice of having to wear like reds and greens. Yeah, and so, like, yeah. It's Christmas time as well, so you get yeah. like the nice warmth, red colouring in cool. as well. The costume design is brilliant. The use mm. of the pearl necklace is... Really good. Really cool. They yeah. use it kind of like as a thing where it almost feels like they kind of like almost like subliminally refer to it as a bit of a dog collar. Like she's been oh, okay. put on a leash yeah. when she does like, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, you fuck it. You, 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 you bend by our rules type right, of shit type okay. of thing. Like, it's so, again, it's the whole film is not fuck the royals. Yeah. It's, but it's also not like, oh, look how class of a bloke yeah. Charles is. But he's not. It's also like he's. But it's also not like fuck Charles. Yeah. It is like it, it almost feels more so like she's just been 
disenchanted with everything. Right. And okay. it's almost like, because it's a really fucking good like examine, examination on mental health, I think. Mm. Which, what an amazing way to like explore that topic with like yeah. a story about Diana, who I yeah. think is one of the bigger victims of yeah, that type of shit. Yeah. Especially, I think, with... Because I, I, it's a similar type of vibe that I get with the documentary Amy, the Amy Winehouse mm. documentary. Yeah, yeah. Fucking brilliant. Yeah, really good. Um, yeah. Where I always look at... I say Amy is almost a horror film. Yeah. In the sense of, like, God, just imagine being really talented and then you just get mobbed. Yeah, just, exactly. Yeah. And it's almost like... And Spencer almost kind of deals with that type of thing mm. where, like, the use of the flashing camera is just such an overwhelming, like, yeah. attack of shit. So... That's really good. The score might be my favorite score of the year. Oh yeah, Johnny Greenwood, who yeah. is probably my favorite composer. Okay, it, it's weird. It kind of goes. It does. It does a bit of jazz, mm. but it does a bit of like really screechy horror music shit as well. Oh, okay. It's interesting. It's cool. cool. Yeah. He's getting more attention for his score for Pal of the Dog, yeah. which that's a brilliant score as well. But I like this score a little bit yeah. better. But I'm Fair fine enough. with him winning either one. Yeah, He's yeah. incredible. Um, but yeah, really fucking well made film. It's not. I'm surprised it is. It isn't getting much award stuff. Yeah, I don't think. But part of me does think it's. It's, because it is a period piece mm. about Diana. Yeah. But it's not like, it's not a charming film. Yeah. It's not like oh a nice little like, it's not Christmas romp. It, <laughs> the, you know the you know the film that Belfast is. It's not, it's yeah. not that. Oh okay. <laughs> it's yeah. not a film that your grand's gonna go to with her yeah, mates and yeah. be like oh. Oh, remember Diana? Oh, wow. Well, oh, yeah. oh no, lovely. No. There's no moments where you're going to chuckle because, oh, that's a little funny yeah, moment. Yeah. It's not a funny film. Yeah. It's really well acted. It's really well. It's, it, it's, it's, it is. It's really quiet as well, okay. yeah. funny enough. It's, it's not big. It's not bombastic. But also, that's kind of, you're in a big bombastic setting, but it's not big and bombastic. Yeah, okay. Because Diana was not big and bombastic. Yeah, yeah. Again, I don't know loads about Diana as like a person mm. anyway, but... You know, I also think just generally it, it's a really well-made story of someone not feeling in the right place. Okay. So if yeah. the fact that it's a royal film and you're like, I don't give a shit about that shit, yeah. it's not that. Go and see it. Really fucking well-made. Yeah. Good to see yeah, I, and, I, and I would love to see Kristen Stewart actually get the Oscar, just get more. It just I would love to see it get a nomination, although yeah. I'm hearing probably Nicole Kidman's the favorite. Oh, for really? For being the Ricardos. Uh, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen it, but I don't want to. Neither do I. I've heard, I've heard it's not good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Aaron Sorkin, what's he doing? Uh, Aaron. Come on. Come on. But yeah. Damn. That's, that's my number six. Is it time for my number six? Yes. You are going to hate this. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my facial reaction with what he's about to say. And okay. See. My number six pick, Oscar W. Fitchett, is Don't Look Up. Adam McKay's Don't Look Up. How much do you hate me in this moment? We'll see what happens in my top five is all I'm saying. Fair enough. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> well. I won't say anything. I'll let you say your piece and then... I really liked this movie. Okay? I, I right, I've seen um, mixed things about it generally online and, you know, it, it, you critically and all that kind of stuff. For me, I thought it kind of dealt with what it was trying to say very well and in a way stop stop laughing and <laughs> in a way that was genuinely entertaining and funny with genuinely good comedic performances and it's no it's not what he's done previously it's not big short and it's not vice which i enjoy a lot i prefer big short big short's great vice is good but it's not as good um this is some. This is him doing something. Adam McKay doing something new and doing something a bit different because it's somewhere in the middle, like his old stuff, like like Anchorman and Step Brothers, which is bizarre to think <laughs> that. <laughs> like, <laughs> to think about now, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah, bizarre yeah. that he did Anchorman and then he's like, oh, what about this film about Dick Cheney? Mm, okay, I guess <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, but like. It's somewhere of a middle ground in between his old weird Will Ferrell movies, um, which are, Leo can have those. They're not, fine. They're, They're not, not your shit. Um, not big Anchorman. Sometimes I I, 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 I like Anchorman. Step Brothers, I have fond memories of just yeah. because of Leo. But um, I'm, not, I'm not sticking them on every time. No, exactly. <laughs> but it, it, there's, there's, it's, it's really weird with him. He can 
recite that movie word for word. Which one? Uh, Step Brothers. I can you, imagine. You can do it. every line. Yeah, I can it's imagine, bizarre. Yeah. Um, but this is somewhere in the middle where it's still it's making a point, and it's making the point well. Don't laugh, whilst also being very funny, very enjoyable, a lovely little time. A lovely little time. Isn't, well, I also I really appreciate <laughs> how it's kind it's bit it's kind of a horror movie. It's really fucking scary <laughs> for people generally. It's a big old anxiety attack for like two hours, and I I appreciate it. I loved it. Two and a half hours. Fuck me. Well, it doesn't feel like it. It flies by. There, I said it. The pacing isn't my issue with the film. I know. What is your issue? Explain your issue. Everything else. <laughs> okay. <Fair enough>. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a film, right? My, I, I won't like. I won't go in like all fuck fuckery about it. Mm. But um, I, what it, it wasn't a film that like I was like not liking when I was watching it. It was a film mm. that I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm fine. You know, mm. yeah, it's, I get everything. Yeah, I get it. Whatever. Yeah, sure. Um, I think Leo is probably Leonardo DiCaprio is probably the best shouter. Yes. Actor ever, he's very good. He's fucking good. Like, he's very good. Like, it's like it's like you give him just a role where he's like shout. It's like, oh god, I I love him. Yeah, <laughs> I love the bit when he's on again. Once upon a time in Hollywood, street kind of. Yeah, you yeah. sure? <laughs> <laughs> just screaming. Yeah, that, yeah, that's funny. Uh, funny. Uh, might be the only funny thing in the film. Not um, true. <laughs> might be the only funny oh. in my bit. And so I was watching. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, sure. Mm. And then like it ended, and I was like, mm. and then. Not sure how I feel about it actually. And then like the next day, like so then like the film ended, and I was like, okay, I'll give it like three stars in the letterbox. I'll give yeah. it the heart. Yeah, sure, yeah. whatever. And then like I woke up the next day and I thought about it. I was like, it was just really like just a smack in the face of a point. It felt yeah. really, it felt really like left, like l- extreme left propaganda to me. So I was like, yeah. I'll, I'll take, I'll take my heart off it. Didn't yeah. like it. Keep it at three stars. Yeah. Then the more I thought about it, the more I was like. There's so much of that that was just so like, like, just like bollocks. So then it's now my two and a half star rating. Like I got angry. At, then I got thought about. I'm like, oh, yeah, right. And then from like a filmmaker point mm. of view, it's shit. It's so I do, fucking I disagree bad. With that. It's one of the worst edited films of the year, and somehow it's getting editing nominations. It the cinematography is fucking dire it's dreadful and somehow it's getting cinematography nominations what twilight zone have i walked into robbie where there's a shot that you can see the crew of the film in it and then when adam mckay gets asked about it he goes yeah well it was intentional because you know it it reflects the really mental time we film this because we filmed this during the covid19 pandemic so it's a it's a crazy story so it was a crazy time filming it so it was an intentional no it wasn't intentional you didn't look at your fucking monitor you didn't look at playback and you're like fuck it we don't have time just keep it in that's what you did you just hope no one saw it but yeah we did adam <sighs> fuck's sake he thinks he's important but he I, isn't. I agree with that. I think he, he feels he feels yeah. like someone that thinks so highly of himself and the films yeah. he makes. Dude, you you did a film about Dick Cheney, which is good. You're not telling me anything new. Yeah. <laughs> like I, think, getting... I think for me, like cin- at one point, it just wise. I d- I agree with it shouldn't be nominated for anything cinematography wise, but also it doesn't matter because it doesn't. Who cares? No, but when I'm noticing it. Yeah, but I'm, for me, it's <laughs> like who who cares about what the cinematography of this comedy movie looks like? Who gives a fuck? But why should it, no? It's not the fact. Does it make it, you? But does it make you laugh? Yes. No, it no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but then that's subjective. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fair. You know. Fair. But another point that got me a little bit like, right. One, I get it. Everyone's a character of something. Yeah. Do you think Adam McKay doesn't like Donald Trump by any chance? Do you think Meryl Streep's meant to be Donald Trump? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I get it. The president's an idiot, right? Yeah. We live through reality. This isn't anything new that we haven't seen mm. in real. And then, right, Jonah Hill, he's good. Yeah. I don't think he knows which film he was meant to be in, though. Really? <laughs> like, come on. Like, it's like, no, I, and then, and I then it's. I back down on this. And then, like, <laughs> right. And I love me, and I love me some Timothy Chalamet. Yeah. I love him. He was funny, though. He was, he was pretty funny. <laughs> come on. Come on, the film have been just following him. No. I would have laughed more. No. Yeah. Fuck you! No. That's, no, sorry, I'm putting my foot down at that comment. What that, What would the movie that's be? That's me being an If it was about point. Timothy Chalamet, it wouldn't be anything. It would have been just a d- stoner comment. <laughs> you, then, uh, no, because that is me being an asshole. Yeah, that is really you being an asshole. That's, that's being, not what the movie's about that's me at all. Just say so to be a dickhead. I, and I, also, I, right. Uh, and also, right. Right. 
Mark Rylance. If, really if I see him nominated for anything... Oh, he shouldn't be nominated for anything, but he's very good. If I No, he isn't. He is. He's good in it. I really liked him in that movie. <laughs> Genuinely, I really liked him in that. I get he's Bezos, Jobs, and Musk. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But no, but the, the thing is, right, they're all characters of people, mm. but they don't say anything else other than it's like, <laughs> that's, what, that's what this person's like. No, I disagree. What I, does Meryl I, Streep I, give I, other than I, I Donald agree. Trump was shit? Yeah, but it's not that. It's that the movie's not about looking at the political landscape of... Are you fucking having me not. on? It's Are you not. Me on? No, 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 no. Adam McKay basically made liberal propaganda. No. That's the all this film the is. The movie's about... The, what, who's the film made for? Because, right, I'm not being funny. Anyone who has these opinions, you're not telling them anything new. You're not being like... Yeah, it's just like, yeah, we get it. But anyone who doesn't have these views aren't going to watch this. You're not getting any Trump supporters or Proud Boys watching Don't Look Up. Especially for two and a half hours. You know what I mean? No one's wa- Anyone who disagrees with this, you're not, edu- you're not changing their minds because they're not going to go and see this film. Borat 2 did it better within that scenario. Like, it's like... Come on. And another, right, one thing that did make me uncomfortable with it. Yeah. And that's not a phrase I thought I would describe uh, uh, don't yes. look up with. We're supposed to be uncomfortable. That's the point. No, but this is not not, not for this reason <laughs> okay, I'm about okay, to say. Come. Jennifer Lawrence starts necking on with Timothy Charlemagne, yeah. whatever that's the character. Then I then brought, then it then, fl- I then had a fucking flashback mm. to an interview in 2017. That Jennifer Lawrence had, where she just basically flat out objectified Timothy Chalamet, being like, oh, oh, I would want to stuck him like a pig and then make him mine. He is of age, isn't he? Yeah, but that's, that's not, that, that's something outside of the context of the movie. You can't so then I'm watching it and I'm like, but no, but I then I'm know just. That see- was a thing, that's all. But then <laughs> I'm just seeing like Jennifer Lawrence necking on with Timothy yeah. Chalamet in the film. Okay, that's the characters. And I thought, oh, oh no, no, now I know the fucking. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying Jennifer Lawrence pulled her weight and be like, so Adam. Yeah. How about this be the... I'm, I'm not saying that's yeah. the case. But you know what I mean? It's just elements like, read the room. Yeah, fair <laughs> like enough. That, like read to, to read me, the situation, man. To me, I mean... I'm, elements I did... Right, I get the fact of, like... I like what they're trying to do in the sense of, like... There's a legit fucking comet hit, gonna come and hit yeah. the w- fucking planet and, like, ex- make... Every, like, it's an extinction-level thing. Yeah. I, and then... They go on this, like, news bet. It's not even news. It's a fucking, like, yeah. it's, it's the one show or yeah, whatever the fuck it is yeah. at that point. It's like GMB or something. It's, uh, even that, uh, like, the whole thing, it's like, again, I don't know. It just feels like you... I remember the comparison that we had. Mm. I, I said to you at one point, I was like, uh, I feel like your thoughts and my thoughts on this film are the same as the thoughts that we have on another film, but switched. I'll finish okay. my point first, then yeah. I'll say, yeah. right, so... I like the element of like how you get like Jennifer Lawrence rightfully being like, we're all going to fucking die. Yeah. But then like people's reaction to that is like, let's make a meme of her. Yeah. I like, yeah. I, yeah, I get it. Mm. And then also, oh, Leonardo DiCaprio. Oh, sexy scientist. Yeah. Yes, because that would happen. Mm. But I don't think to the extreme that they're trying to do anything. But to me, it's mm. not f- it's not humorous. Again, it's subjective, whatever. You found it funny. Yeah. I'm glad you found it funny. Yeah. Which is where my next topic comes in. Okay. Your thoughts on this film and my thoughts on this film mm. is like our relationship with the disaster artist, but switched. I'm looking at Don't Look It Up. Yeah, I'm like, fair. this is just a big sketch. Yeah. That got written very quickly and we're like, quick! Yeah. Get it done! I can see Because everyone's mean. just a big caricature. Yeah. And I mean, it's not doing anything different. Yeah. I'm not saying you need to be doing anything revolutionary or different, but like, no. come on. To me, it <laughs> felt... He it's, was he's been, he's spoken about it and he said that he wanted to do a film tackling the climate crisis, which is fair, right? And then to me, the film does that well by showing giving us something in a satirical light. Like it, the the film's a satire. That's the that's the point. But I feel like if he did it better with films like Vice. I feel like no. he did a little bit more like like it's a bit like blur, but I feel like it's it's still enough of like. A focused point. Yeah, but to me, the the point of Don't Look Up is is it's a satirical look at what would happen if something is as opposed to climate change w- in the real world, which is a gradual process that is that people need to take more attention to, but don't. Mm. Instead, he's gone well. We're doing a kind of an absurdist satirical comedy, so 
Instead, it's going to be like, in this amount of days, a comet's going to hit the Earth, we're all going to die. What would people actually do? Well, if you're thinking about it satirically, it, as a satirical comedy, then people would, as, they are not, as they're doing with climate change, wouldn't do anything. And yeah. they'd look at it and be like, yeah, fuck it. Because that's, that's how humanity is. So that, that's the point it's trying to make. It's, trying to be, it's, uh, it's meant to be a wake-up call for climate change to be like, look how fucking stupid we all are. Isn't yeah, this but, ridiculous? Yeah, Which, but, yes, it is ridiculous, and it's funny. But at the same time, it's also going, well, fucking kick up the ass then. But it's also so black and white in the sense of, like, it's like, you're either an idiot or you're intelligent. Like, that's what, mm. or, like, it's either, you're either an idiot or you have common sense. That's just all it is. Yeah. There's no, like, middle ground in anything. I'm not saying, mm. like... I can, but, like, I can agree with that. Like, it's but, like, at yeah. that one point, I'm just looking at cardboard cutouts of, like, Adam McKay going, like, this good, this bad... That's all it feels like. Yeah, but then that's... But I feel like... Well, that's not life. That's not the movie he was trying to make. He wasn't trying to do, like, a nuanced... I'm not saying this means nuanced, but I'm saying saying if you want to try and make an argument or you're pointing to an argument... Yeah. Don't don't shout your point at me. But I don't... Yeah. I know what you mean. Like, it's a loud film. Yeah. But, like, it's all almost like I'm being told. It's like... Climate change! Bad. Bad! (laughs) Trump! Bad! I know! Let's chill out, man. I know, I'm getting it! Red Hot's no good! <laughs> Listen to science! It's like, I know! I am! Fuck! I liked it. Jesus! Do your number five. I'm <laughs> sick! We'll break for a second for a okay. bit. One, I need to get my computer charger. Oh, okay. So, just in case if I need to do this, I'll say. Tune into part two because this might end up being split into oh, two yeah, parts. Shit, yeah. So if if I have split into two parts, mm. it'll be on the following day. So yeah. it'll be Saturday today. It'll be on on the Sunday. Cool. That'll be our five through one. Yeah. And also, we're gonna intro it with a bit of bullshit. Yeah. But if not, then I'm leaving this in still. Yeah, but I'd say whatever. Not. But I, I'm I'm gonna, I need to get my computer charged because I'm very low battery. I'll be right back.